This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 365 for the week of April 20th, 2015. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. And my name is Steve. And on today's show, we have very special guest translator in uh, Weekly Shonen Jump for One Piece. We have Stephen Paul. Hey, Stephen. Hello, Reddit. I have seen Gear Fourth. Ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, What's it about? <laughs> I'm What's immediately regretting this offer. No, you <laughs> should, <laughs> can't. can't uh, you can't extend that kind of offer. Uh, we also have a special guest uh, at, from the Cable News Network. We have Jose Argumento. Hey, Jose. Hey, everyone. Nice uh, to see you all again. It's been a while. Yeah, how's it been going? You're looking great, Jose. Thanks. Uh, which is weird because you can't see me. Uh, <laughs> uh, just what been the hell busy. Am I looking at? <laughs> been super busy. That's all. That, that's all, really. Uh, at the top of the show, besides uh, all of us wanting to ask Stephen the obvious questions here, uh, there, there's a lot of big news that we talked about last week, and uh, I want to go into a little more detail here. Uh, we announced that we are going to Dallas, and uh, Jose, I don't know if we mentioned who's going to Dallas, it's going to be Jose, Steve, myself, Ed, and Jammer, we'll all be going there. Uh, Jose, you got a new camera. Yeah, I got some brand new toys besides the new camera uh, that I'm going to be taking to Dallas, so... Uh, look for that. That's going to be kind of cool. It's going to be really nice. Get those wonderful toys. Yeah. Uh, what kind of what kind of toys are you talking about here? Is this, <laughs> is this family <laughs> friendly? This is totally family friendly. I, I guess. Um, I mean, obviously, we got the new camera, which is the Sony FS100. Uh, we're still keeping the old one for now. I don't know what I'm going to do with it quite yet. Um, and we're also, I also am going to be getting a new laptop with uh, some new editing software. So that'll be really nice and fun. I get to play around with that. And uh, I do have some new audio equipment, but nothing overly fancy. Just uh, some people might not be holding handheld mics anymore. They might be uh, lobbed up. So it'll look a little better. So, uh, speaking of, uh, in order to kind of facilitate uh, the camera work, we're, we, uh, we unfortunately need to ask uh, for a little help uh, with like a shoulder mount um, and and a couple of tripods, a couple of tripods, in addition to some transportation costs, specifically the rental car um, to put all that in because uh, it's a lot of equipment. Uh, so. We're asking for help in a kind of different way. Uh, we have put our T-shirts online, so you get something cool for helping us as well. Uh, we had the One Piece podcast one that just ended. Uh, if you guys still want that, please let me know. We'll restart that. Uh, we're going to be, uh, or I'm going to at least try to, uh, re-release the Banana Me shirt this week. So keep an eye out on the... A lot of last-minute buyers on that one. Yeah, so I, I wanted to give people a chance, uh, since that was out for a very short time in comparison, which is partially my fault there. Um, and those should be shipping out like this week. Yeah, those are going to be the the first round's going to be shipping out this week um, or next week. I, I forget exactly, uh, but soon. Um, I think they should arrive the first week of May, the latest. They usually overestimate those, so hopefully it's a little earlier. Um, so we're going to be trying to re-release that this week. Uh, so go to uh, teespring.com slash banana me shirt. Uh, you could always reserve it, even if it's not immediately available. It'll automatically uh, be restarted if 10 of you do it. I think already one or two people have done it uh, as I am speaking now. Uh, so please go out there and, and, and do that. Um, that that's a great way but the the big push that we're doing and this isn't just for opp dallas this is in in general for the podcast um we've been looking for ways to to kind of support i mean for since we've started to kind of pay for costs and to pay for future projects like opp japan um or opp dallas or whatever we may be doing may or we may just, not be doing in the future we just kind of inadvertently announced the sequel to opp japan there didn't we <laughs> not really uh oh, okay he's talking in retrospective <laughs> retrospective or prospectively okay. uh whatever don't leak that trailer jose <laughs> yeah that one we've already made <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna release it on monday uh, so no and matter so, so no matter what we do or might do in the future, uh, we need your help. And the best way we figure to do it, instead of uh, charging you for backlogged episodes or filling our airtime with tons of advertisements, uh, I, th I think a pretty cool way to do it is to get your support on a more subscription kind of basis voluntarily using uh, Patreon, which is... Uh, 
I only heard about this a few months ago as, as from Jose, but it's a cool way. Actually, Jose, you want to mention kind of how it works? Sure. Patreon is basically, as Zach said, it's a subscription service that works similar to a Kickstarter, except instead of Kickstarter working to one goal, a Patreon is going to help us pay for ongoing costs, such as hosting of our episodes, which we're getting a lot. I mean, we have how many 300 some odd episodes Three, to host. 360 plus because we have specials and all that other stuff yeah there. so even even more than what i'm saying um <laughs> and uh you know that that costs money and we would also like to be able to i think at least in my end i would definitely like to push our video capabilities far more yeah um because i, I feel that seems to be really popular with you guys um like the and stuff we did with uh, Ian Sinclair back back in the way back in the a, day, a year that was and back a half in at, ago. Yeah. That was back in Atlanta, back in 2013. Then we did it again at uh, Anime Boston, and of course, big projects like OPP Dallas and OPP Japan. And um, I, I don't mind saying this, but I, I'm currently looking into some pre-production for. OPP Japan too. That doesn't mean it's happening. I'm just I'm We're looking, looking into, into some... seeing. I mean, it's gonna. <laughs> the problem is, it's gonna be an expensive project as as it would be. So, your help at this stage going forward to something that may not happen for years, uh, or may or may not happen for years, really is helpful to anything. Yeah, I gotta learn do. Japanese before this happens. Yeah, to, me too. It um, could happen. It could happen. I, I'm busy on w- trying to work in another camera, <laughs> another camera. Uh, so again, oh, oh, so you're gonna get a selfie stick? <laughs> no. Uh, actually, the camera I'm looking, I'm a camera I'm looking into is the FS700, so we could do more slow motion shots. All Just six people cool. out there. All six. Uh, people we really, out we there. really need those high fives to be slow. Yeah. Very. Slow. Shoots at 240 frames a second. Nobody cares, but I do. I just want. I want to cool. see. I want to see my jowls just wiggle. <laughs> I just I kind of wanted the thing I was thinking would have been really cool if we would have had the time at, or the the camera really to do it with would be slow motion in Universal Studios Japan some of that oh, stunt yeah. work stuff would have been really cool in slow yeah, motion yeah no you're right um although so if you help pay for this Patreon we might be able to do that <laughs> so again Patreon you could do anything from one dollar to you know unlimited amounts and it charges monthly um and you're, there are perks that are currently there we're going to be adding some really cool perks uh in the future you could always change your perks or your uh amount that you put in so don't worry if you do it now you could always get something really cool um and uh yeah that, like so, like some of the stuff we have is opp japan deleted scenes and uh, yeah right now we have d- yeah, deleted scenes uh steve you uh, volunteer to to do some commissions for people i think that's right now at the hundred dollar level uh Uh (laughs) you you volunteered (laughs) you told me um limited to five people a month right yeah so and there's there's a lot more other little things out there so speaking uh, of opp japan deleted scenes we're probably going to have some coming out soon um specifically extended interviews we're not going to be subtitling those because that's just way too much time we're going to be dubbing them uh, so look for those in the future. For those of you that are backers, you get those automatically. If you want access to those, please pay for the Patreon. I didn't even know we were dubbing that. Who's dubbing that? <laughs> uh, probably myself and Greg. If I can get Greg, he'll dub himself. And we got to get General Septim on board. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we have to go get Don Ram. You're yeah. saying One Piece is... <laughs> um, a couple other little plugs before uh, we start. Endless Schmaltz, of course, you can check out new episodes every Thursday. The episode we're getting into like some of the favorite ones that that are, have been recorded thus far. Thank you to anyone that's been listening to it so far. It's I have a lot of fun doing it. I know it was kind of like my uh, you know my creation, but it's it's been a blast, and I really hope you guys are enjoying it. If you're if you're not listening to it yet, it's good, it's a retrospective podcast where we're going back and we're watching like shows from our childhood to see like how well they hold up. And we we're starting with uh, speaking of General Septum, of course, we're starting with Gundam Wing, and we're doing the entire series. And, and the we're Garlic also, Jr. Saga. Yeah, and we also have our bonus monthly series of Dragon Ball Z's The Garlic Jr. Saga filler, original 1999 dub. And yep. uh, I'm super happy to be part of this podcast because it's made me go back through a bunch of Gundam. Like, I've watched a ton of it now. I so, now, I want to kind of just, I want to dive into this rabbit hole and start watching some more Gundam series. I like Gundam. Gundam's great. It's, um, it's awesome. Recently mm-hmm. turned 20. Uh, Gundam Wing recently turned 20. Some some other things I want to mention. Uh, Steve, you were at a, what is it, just, just called Teco? Uh, yes, it? it was originally called uh, Tekoshokan, but they shortened it to Teco. 
think they're trying to like kind of expand beyond just the Japanese pop culture. Uh, yeah, if you went there, you got to see such reoccurring One Piece podcast staff members like Steve Yurko and J. Michael Tatum. <laughs> he hasn't reoccurred in a little while now. Um, that's the joke. <laughs> Uh, we'll change I had, that next month. <laughs> I had no idea he was uh, going to be there, so uh, we both kind of flipped out. So it was nice to uh, it was nice to see the guy, and uh, he's very happy with uh, our success recently. Yay! We do have success, right? Um, yes. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, I also, since we mentioned it, OPP Japan is still available for free to everyone at oppjapan.com. Uh, please check that out. Uh, a lot of work. Not you know, Jose put into it, Greg put into it, I put into it, uh, and everyone else, uh, Stephen as well, uh, and Stephen Ed, and everyone, everyone. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, please check that out. Um, again, the Patreon. I don't know if I mentioned the URL is at patreoncom slash podcast. Patreon is spelled uh, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Uh, we also have a few editorials out. I just want to mention quickly, uh, including. Uh, Cody's Treasure Cruise review that's coming out this week. Uh, we have a new Chow Time that came out uh, this week and a new piece out. Going through the... I, I don't know if Top 5 Devil Fruits is the way to put it, but, you know, Devil Fruits that are more than Devil Fruits is, is the way uh, Kyle put it. So it's the second part of, of that uh, of that column, which is, which is a cool look at... Yeah. Uh, it's something those, we talk about a lot, but don't examine enough. Those Devil Fruits are more than meets the teeth. Um, I also want to give a big congratulations to, uh, I'm just ignoring that joke, Steve. Uh, <laughs> Someone will laugh out there. I want to give a big Somebody. congratulations to, uh, Stephen, who personally put volume 74 as number one on the New York Times bestseller. Oh yeah, that was me. Yeah. yeah congratulations, I, Stephen. I read, yeah, he, he, he went out a whole to, bunch of them. Yep. He <laughs> went to every store in San Diego and bought them all. No, but, yep. but seriously, big accomplishment. Um, and I know, uh, Greg tweeted in Japanese saying, uh, this this is the the manga. The, hey world, this is the manga. Um, is this this isn't the first time we've been no. number one? No, no, no but no. it's the first time in a little while, and yeah. it's always good to see. I mean, really encourage, especially in the first week, because that's when the highest percentage of a chance of this happening is. I'm really happy I contributed and bought it. I just bought it, so I'm contributing to week two or three or whatever week we're going to be in. I'm, I'm gonna go buy it probably <laughs> digitally. I mean, that's fine. I Here's does that count? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. I don't um, know if that counts on the New York list. Not in the New York yeah, list. I didn't count some money list. But uh, it ends with my favorite sp- spread ever. Uh, I don't know if you could call it a spread. Let's just let's just call it Usopp face. And if you know volume seventy four, you'll know what I'm talking about there. Um, I, I had not seen that in like full size print yet. It is cr- it's really creepy to look at. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Um, all right, so today we have a really good show for you guys. We have, uh, we're going into volume 77. We have some piece together. We have a triple tsunami recap with uh, Jose here uh, helping us through that. Uh, and we have an anime uh, recap as well. Uh, for those listening on the AAC feed, so basically in the iTunes feed, uh, you're going to hear this noise. And that is a camera shutter, and that indicates that a new image is coming up to go along with your volume 77 recap. So for that segment, you'll be able to see what we're talking about. Uh, If you're in the SoundCloud uh, or elsewhere, I apologize. Or YouTube, uh, I apologize. You can't. uh, Actually, on YouTube, I think you will be able to see the image. So I I take that back. But I apologize if you can't. Uh, You can always subscribe on iTunes and and listen that way. Um, So uh, without further ado, are you guys ready to get this episode started? Yes, sir. This is the Volume 77 Recap, and with us to go through the volume is, of course, the translator for One Piece and Weekly Shonen Jump, Stephen Paula. Hey, Stephen. Hey, Zach. How's it? How's it going? Uh, it's going quite well. Uh, what What did you think of this volume first, uh, in general, overall? Um, well, not the content, but all the other frills and stuff. All like the that. other stuff. Um, I don't know. I maybe my opinion will change a little bit once we have gone through them. But I, I did think it was a little light on the SBS. There's um, a lot of Usopp gallery. Side. Right? Yeah, there is a lot of Usopp gallery. Um, but there's also uh, there are also 12 chapters in this because this was the stretch where he was doing a lot of short chapters. So uh, there's just more breaks in between the chapters. So that's probably why there's a little bit more 
uh, fan art than usual. Yeah. Um, so I guess we should uh, start on the cover. So, Stephen, you want to start us out on the cover here? Yeah. So um, we did talk about this uh, a little bit when the cover was unveiled. And uh, now we have the uh, the real deal in our hands here. And it's uh, yeah, it's a rare cover. It is a an all villain uh, no straw hats on this cover. It's no just Luffy. the Don Quixote. Yeah, no, no Luffy, no nothing. Just Do Flamingo and all of his cronies. Uh, Steven, I want to hear your thoughts on it first. I don't know if we actually got to hear your thoughts uh, when we talked about it. Um, I don't know. I, I like I like the concept. Um, uh, you know, especially. I, I love the idea of anything like every time we get a tease where it's like, oh, maybe maybe he's doing the Alabasta thing again, where it's going to be like a two part cover where like one is a mirror image of the other sort of thing. Like I always get excited when that possibility arises. and I don't think he's ever actually done that again yeah. unless yeah. I'm forgetting. Uh, so I like the idea that, you know, he's doing the villain cover. It's it's something different. Um, but I, I don't know if I like the, the layout, just the way that he did this. Uh, Steve, I mean, you, um, you talked yeah. a little bit. I know like some people are kind of like, oh, what's up with this rectangle? Uh, I, I thought maybe Oda would have just done it the way he did, uh, the, uh, the first, uh, CPR. the first Marineford volume oh, with yeah. Whitebeard and like kind of, they all just like bled off to the bottom of the cover. Um, who knows? Like, it's kind of. Maybe it's like intentional, like you're keeping these guys separate from the main four of the Don Quixote family show. Like, oh, these guys are just puppets. You know, we're you know we're the ones running the show, and you yeah, guys because are he actually looks like he's using them as strings almost. Well, like sugar isn't really expendable. That's true. <laughs> she's, sure. she's very important. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I think uh, I think mm-hmm. Dofi's hand comes off a little flat. Uh, that middle finger is like just going straight up. It looks a little awkward. Um, I can't really complain about it too much though. It's just like, oh, hey, it's a cover, cool. Uh, Ed, do you have any thoughts? You know, I'm I'm not terribly enthusiastic about like the just the random band of villains in the middle of it. But uh, besides that, I mean, I just, they look so evil. You know, <laughs> I like it. No, I, I no, I I agree with Ed in general. I think the seeing the characters in full col- color on the cover. It's just always a lot of fun, especially with these guys where we don't mm-hmm. get to see it. I mean, we see it in the anime, but I, I like seeing it drawn by Oda. It's, it's just nice to see. Um, you well, get... he does set up the obvious parallel for the next volume because there's a lot of new characters on Luffy's side. Yeah, I uh, hope to see mm-hmm. something with the allies. Or Well, don't you think like the previous volume cover was kind of like yeah, the that's true. cover? It was a bit, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of feel like that's what's happening here. I don't think there's going to be a, a straw hat. Alliance. I'm really little. curious about the next cover. Like, I don't know what. Well, I think like the next volume. Like, is that where we are? Uh, I mean, it's where I don't we know are how now. many. I don't know how many chapters were in the uh, new volume so far, but I wonder if it's going to end with Doflamingo well, getting eaten. We're at currently chapter what 784 is next week, and this goes to 775. So actually, I think next week's it's going to be one of the last chapters in the next volume. Mm. Um, so you kind of get an idea of the arc. It's probably going to be Bellamy, Law, Doflamingo, Luffy, that whole group, and Treble maybe. I, I don't know. It could when he's a Kiro spare. Oh, I'm sorry. Pika, the, that whole stuff is in, I think, the next volume, mm-hmm. right? It's not in this one. Um, yeah. That stuff is crazy cool, too. So maybe Zoro and Luffy and then the rest of them. I don't know. There's a lot of yeah. possibilities. It's crazy cool. <laughs> but, you know, no. better than the... the re- there's something way better than the cover here. And Stephen, do you want to mention? Uh, yeah. So if you take off the front cover, we actually have a we have more than one uh, little Easter egg it's under the many. cover yeah. this time. Uh, first of all, at the very top, uh, we have uh, Oda. He um, he kept up his uh, his little tribute. Uh, to Masashi Kishimoto, he has the the One Piece logo that was Naruto fied, where you know the the silhouette of uh, Luffy is instead uh, it's Naruto and the eye for One Piece, and you have the uh, um, the the Leaf uh, Village logo for the for the O in One Piece. Uh, so that's that's kind of neat. I guess this must have been the first volume that he put together since that. 
uh, since the series ended or, or something. I don't know. I don't. The the timeline is a little fuzzy. It's, it's in my pretty head. huge that he did that on the volume cover. I'm, I'm a little more. Yeah. Well, to... on the on the underneath of the well, volume cover. Also, this this volume features that uh, the cover uh, illustration with uh, Luffy eating with Naruto, of course. So. Okay. Oh, so that's yeah, a, that, yeah. that must be it then. Makes sense. <laughs> yes. Uh, but more importantly, we see uh, sitting front and center, yes, it's uh, Donkey Panda Man Flamingo. Uh, <laughs> Episode title? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck finding a good picture of Panda Man. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, no, it's it's great. I love, uh, I say every time, but I love the Panda Man substitutions on the uh, the undersides of the covers, and this is definitely a really good one. Uh, so why don't we go to the, the I I should say I don't, I don't want to gloss over this. This is freaking hilarious. Um, mm-hmm. If you're in the AAC feed, you're looking at it right now. I'm sure uh, we'll post it elsewhere as well. But it's just it's uh, disconcerting in uh, the funniest and weirdest of ways. Anyway, uh, do you want to go to the inside flap? That's, yes, that's, uh... let's let's go to the inside flap. And uh, here we have a, an image of, uh, looks like a kabuki actor, I suppose. Um, and he seems to be spinning. Yurr, uh, is the sound effect. And he, his comment is, uh, it, is it is said that, uh, you know, the... Um, like the value of a, a figure skater or a ballerina's rotation is in the cyclone method, um, which I'm not sure if that's the actual word or if that's just what the Japanese call it. Um, uh, but yeah, that's the that's that's what a figure skaters and ballerinas use to uh, to do their high speed spins. It's the cyclone method, and he says, uh, you know, if you could install. A uh, a cyclone method uh, in your anus, uh, you could uh, you know expel the contents at, at extreme uh, velocity, and that would solve all of your constipation issues. Uh, so, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I expected. <laughs> probably a little God, bit like that. God, Enteru. <laughs> uh, damn, I had. Is it, is the thunder that bad? <laughs> it was loud right there. All right. I have something to say. Was your constipation that bad? Is probably the, anyway. Was <laughs> Steve, it constipation? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, um, uh, best-selling manga in Japan, folks. <laughs> Cyclone Anus. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Cyclone Volume Seven Seventy Seven. Let it begin. Something like that. Um, yeah. Mm. And uh, let's see, nothing particularly noteworthy in the uh, the introductions and the character stuff. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this was um, – it's a combination of two things. This is a longer volume. It's uh, 230 pages, and this was also a stretch. He's been doing better the last uh, half a dozen chapters or so, but uh, this was a stretch where there were a lot of 15-page chapters instead of 19 pages. Um, so – I think he there are twelve chapters instead of the usual uh, ten. And, and for those wondering, content-wise, we start out in the middle of the flashback, uh, specifically where Corazon starts talking again. Again, I'm sorry for the first time. Um, yes, and with the uh, with the bear, uh, the color spread with all the bears on it. Exactly, and it ends content-wise um, with, with the senior pink, with the senior pink, the mm-hmm. big cliffhanger. We'll, no, send your pink already lost, but I you get it. Long, I think this is the longest volume since volume 69, which was, yeah, that was I think really 250 long. pages long. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and also uh, because it happens, just so happens that the first chapter uh, begins with a, a color spread where it starts on, you know, with, with both right and left pages. They had a blank page in between the contents and uh, the chapter, and so they just have... Uh, the Dope Flamingo? I don't, yeah, this Dope Flamingo page. I don't oh, know. No. This just sort of looks like a fan art or something. Well, there's really? a reason that they have that. It's because on the Shonen Jump cover, they had those separate images of Luffy and Dope Flamingo. Remember with the strings in the background? Um, mm-hmm. 
Mm. I don't know if you remember. I don't recall it. No. Um, So that was from from the cover of Jump. So so yeah. So they have the Luffy. They have the Luffy one on the first page, which they always have, and so Mm. they put the Do Flamingo one uh, on the on the next page. Which it says oh, hereafter yeah. seventy seven volumes, volumes will start. Will that's, start. Okay, that's a lot so of volumes. Yeah, <laughs> one hundred and fifty four volumes of One Piece. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be the final total. <laughs> you know what? That sounds quick, perfectly reasonable. Quick to Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, let's see. So we start in the, the middle of the flashback, as Zach mentioned, and uh, the first SBS. Uh, what do we have? Oh yeah, everybody's. Uh, favorite fishman, uh, Daruma. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> he was so memorable. Uh, yeah, he and Chopper are doing their digging thing. Uh, they're doing the SBS, and uh, the and this, this is a pretty weak one. Uh, the the SBS yeah. title call is a guy who says, uh, "Let the SBS be." Oh, forget it. And then Oda's like, "What? You're not gonna do it?" Um. Is that supposed but, to be uh, like an out Kiji thing? I don't know. I suppose so. Um, if the, if it is, there's no like direct reference to it. But um, yeah, the 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 question here on for the first uh, SBS is actually something that um, we did. Uh, William did report on this uh, back when it uh, yeah, we, it we arose. Put, we put this on the site. It, it got mm-hmm. a, a, the my the the uh, fans of the series you're about to mention got very mm-hmm. excited about it. Uh, yes, it was uh, it was pointed out that back in the uh, 23rd volume of One Piece in the Usopp Gallery Pirates, uh, there was a, uh, a piece of fan art um, of Smoker, which uh, looks looks pretty cool. And if you look at the name of the person who submitted it, it is uh, Kohei Horikoshi, who is the artist of My Hero Academia. And uh, has, uh, among other things, he's had a couple series, um, but that's his big hit now. Of course, it's it's one of the the real breakout hits of the last year for Jump. And uh, so, yeah, you know, ten. He's like, wow, twenty. Well, I'm twenty three. That's about ten years ago. Uh, so, you know, obviously, he sent that in when he was a student, um, and now he's a you know he's a pro mangaka. He's uh, he he's got a series in Jump that's like neck and neck with One Piece. In fact, I think um, some of the people who uh, like tally up and sort of average out, the, including uh, the William, placement. who's who's doing a column on that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the, the people who do who do this for all of Jump, uh, kind of regularly as the uh, the issues come out, uh, I think over the last year it's actually been the number one, like the highest place in the magazine, just above uh, One Piece on average. Um, so they are, they're both like, like, you know, two, two of the maybe three or four that are kind of the signature series in jump right now. Um, so yeah, he just says, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, in fact, he, uh, he, he was like, yeah, we went, when we had the, uh, the jump, uh, new year's party, um, he actually told me himself that he had been there and I was like, man, why didn't you tell me earlier? Um, cause you know, he's been around, he's had a couple series in jump, as I said, um, so yeah. And then it ends with a little plug. He's like, so, uh, yeah, check out my hero academia. Um, so yeah, that's uh, just a really cool, uh, a cool little thing, kind of, a uh, you know, manga, manga culture, just funny, uh, funny little, uh, not, not a coincidence, but, uh, a very cool thing that happened. Well, it's a cool, I, I don't know what like series of events that happened. I don't know how to, it's, it's crazy that, I mean, some of these people who were fans of One Piece a decade ago end up rising up on their own and mm-hmm. becoming really big names. Um, like, I think the the person who does One Piece Party was one of his assistants, and probably before that. I don't know. Mm. Could go on about this. Anyway, what's the next one? Uh, next SBS, uh, we have... Uh... It is a, a header of – I'm not sure what Chopper is actually doing, but he's apparently taking down books and stacking them. Uh, he kind of looks like uh, like a Muppet in that the middle part. <laughs> there, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, all the negative space in the bookshelf mm-hmm. makes out the letters SPS. Yeah, I like yes, how it's the negative right. space because it mm-hmm. took me a second for, for my eyes to like adjust to that correctly. Well, yeah, that's yeah, the appa- Torino Kingdom people, right? They're in yeah, the library appa- there. Yeah. Apparently he brought him into the library. Yeah. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, so the uh, the first question is um, okay, Oda Sensei. So since you ate the uh, the arrow 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 fruit, um, is that why you keep drawing Nami and Robin's boobs larger and larger? Um, he and then, and then a he good asks, question. Very good. Question. Yes. <laughs> can you can you make my mom and my sister's boobs bigger, please? And also that make my, uh, <laughs> and, and also make my my penis bigger while you're at it. And <laughs> the, uh, Freud, Freud, Freud. The <laughs> and the the pen name uh, has uh, you know what does it say? Like the um, Shima uh, person, Shima. It says Hima 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 no Mi, uh, which would be uh, the free time, free time fruit or the like board, board fruit or whatever you, you call it. Uh, and then it says uh, age eight in parentheses. Oh. So uh, oh. <laughs> hmm, I don't know if that makes it better or worse. Um, so Oda said, uh, oh, yeah, you know, that is funny. Now that you mention it, there was that one dessert I had where the fruit just tasted like shit. Uh, and that's ever, and then, yeah, that's, that's, that was the point where ever since, and he, he's like, what are you mean? You mean that's how, that's why I became this way. Um, he sort of does like a Tsukomi thing and, uh, like yells at the guy. He's like, how dare you insinuate that? Um, and then he just finishes saying, uh, uh, may, may all types of things in your family grow larger or <laughs> <laughs> something like that uh that's the uh one piece way of saying may the force be with you yeah Let's yeah i guess so. it, please <laughs> yeah <laughs> all the time we have <laughs> go ahead uh, Steven. yes the next question is um this one is actually about uh rakugo um because it's about the conversation between uh kanjiro and kinemon and um he was pointing out, let's see, this is going to be a tricky one to translate when I have to do this in the volume, because um, he, he refers to, apparently there's a reference to a, a well-known Rakugo story called uh, The Summer Doctor, and then he just says, you know, who's your favorite Rakugo performer, um, and Oda says, oh yeah, you know, that... Um, uh, that one. So there was like the the example uh, of in a, the picture here of um, Kanjiro holding the lettuce that he drew. Um, but when he refers to it in Japanese, he doesn't say uh, normally they would say retasu, which, you know, obviously based on the English word. Um, but there is a another word called uh, chisha, which is like a old old fashioned has uh, some, you know, very rare kanji that you wouldn't see otherwise. Um, and, uh, that, that's apparently comes from a line from the, uh, the story that's being referenced. And then he, he mentions, oh yeah. Um, you know, and then there's also the, the story about the, the sparrows that were drawn in the painting. And, you know, I, I, uh, I told that story on the, uh, the podcast, uh, and he says, yeah, it's kind of funny because, uh, the whole point of that story was that the sparrows were drawn by someone who was good at art, um, Obviously not Conjuro, um, but then he he just lists off a whole bunch of names of uh, of uh, Rakugo performers that he likes, and, and he finishes up with like, I, "There's no end to it. I could just keep going on forever." Um, and then he's like, "Yeah, Rakugo is really great, um, but probably no one else really cares." And then he ends with a little like crying, crying Kanji. Uh, so yeah, that's I guess he uh, he is really into the Rakugo thing. Just something probably probably we'll never really see uh, in in English. Like it's just too too distant a culture to uh, to cross uh, the boundaries. You can but, make something up, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then let's see the next it's next chapter. Yeah. yeah, we have yeah we have some Usopp gallery art. Just just as um, a, the may you grow larger one just happens right in some of the saddest sections of the uh, flashback. Just to give some context. Yeah, great. Yep. Good. Yep. Yeah, just lighten the mood. Um, <laughs> yeah, a couple. Let's well, technically, see. yeah. Sorry, okay, page 98 is the next SBS section, and, and it's a, the header is uh, Nami and Chopper in a, a hot spring. Uh, that one's okay. Um, let's see. The the first question, I like this one, uh, the, the, <laughs> the person asks, that scar on Sabo's face, is that from when he fought me? And Oda's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
And uh, the next question is about uh, the Corazon uh, symbol on Law's back. Um, and it's kind, of, it's kind of a gimme. It's like, okay, uh, so, hmm, yeah, is that thing that says Corazon on Law's back, is that supposed to mean, you know, like the same Corazon that Law loved so much? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. That, that would have been a good answer. That would have been a better answer if I had just done that. Uh, no, and then the other question was, uh, did Law get that code order made? And uh, Oda says, yes, yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, um, it, it's for Corazon. Uh, it means heart in Spanish. And uh, it is also, you know, it's like, so uh, it was Cora's uh, code name. And he's also the captain of the Heart Pirates. So, you know, it, it you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't necessarily know. Like it makes sense that that Law would wear it because Corazon is heart and he's the heart captain, so you wouldn't necessarily make a connection if you didn't know about the Corazon, the character. Um, and he is also, you know, he he is a surgeon, and so he works on hearts a lot, um, and so on. And then he finishes, uh, yeah, and it is order made. <laughs> so we got to get ourselves one of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's next? And uh, lastly, uh, just continuing on the uh, the, the trend here uh, about uh, Corazon, and it's a question about his actual name, Rosinante. He says, "Is that uh, from uh, you know uh, the actual Don Quixote by uh, Cervantes?" And uh, he said, I noticed that, uh, you know, Don Quixote's horse was named Rocinante. Um, so, uh, yes, please, g- please give us an in-depth explanation of all of this. And uh, Oda is like, oh, yes, Don Quixote. Yes. Uh, you know, a satirical work that features, uh, you know, a, a sort of clownish knight. Um, yes. Very, very famous uh, piece of literature. And now I will explain in detail uh, I did it just because, and that's his answer. <laughs> um, b- before continuing, I-, I think for regular regular listeners of the podcast, a lot of this information is much more obvious than I think it is to the more yeah. casual reader. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I-, I I don't want to yeah you know, I want to take with a grain of salt everything. I mean, obviously that last one, but uh, in general, mm-hmm. I think most people didn't know a lot of these uh, kind of crossovers and not cro- references it's the word i was mm. looking for anyway Stephen, please yeah next one it's yes. just you know filling out the the, uh, the background exactly um yeah the next one i, I really like this uh <laughs> this this is really well drawn this uh, sbs header is uh conjuro um in fact i think it's it may be a little inappropriate because it's too well drawn for conjuro um <laughs> uh, but he he is drawing some eels um and uh, he also put in a little sparrow for one of the the kanji. Looks like one of uh, the Angry Birds. <laughs> it kind of does. Oh yeah, uh, I didn't even realize it was a sparrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the uh, the first question here is about Gladius. Now, Gladius, you may recall, has the power of the pop pop fruit, and therefore this question is, of course, does Gladius's penis pop? And Oda says only uh, yes, when it, only when <laughs> Gladius and another woman really, really, really love each other. <laughs> and I was going to ask any of the questions that are about penises in this volume. <laughs> I guess these are. I really hope these are just children that just like discovering this for mm-hmm. the first time. Like penis, penis. Oh my god. Well, also when you're a kid, <laughs> the, I mean, you're going to ask stupid, perverted questions. Not not even perverted. Just and you write questions. them in. It's why, it's why I believe all these questions are real. I just question the selection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, oddly enough, make that penis pop. Not one of the more popular club rap singles. I don't know why. <laughs> God. Uh, nice. Next question. Wait, what was the answer? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. Of course. Of course oh, okay, it does. Okay. Are you kidding? Um, no. <laughs> uh so next question is, uh, how old is uh, Corazon? Um, and also, why is sugar? Why was sugar not in any of the flashback scenes of the uh, the Don Flamingo family? And the Don Flamingo family. Uh, I, I was getting confused. I was okay. I was looking at it. it said Don Quixote. And I was, okay, I was no, that's it. okay. Well, she uh, was in one flashback. Yeah, uh, at the she, beginning, the very first one. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that was the start of Dress Rosa. Um, anyways, oh, yeah, he uh, 
He says uh, Corazon is two years younger than Doflamingo, and he was 26 when he died. Um, and he also says that uh, Sugar and Monet joined after that whole incident. And uh, they were, they both of them were saved uh, by Doflamingo from uh, terribly misfortunate circumstances, which kind of seems to be a, a trend with the, uh, the family. Uh, like and, baby five, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were nine years old and 17, and they were actually sisters. Um, so Monet and Sugar are sisters. And uh, so now they, they risk their lives. Sister. <laughs> they risk their lives for the sake of uh, the family. And uh, yes, they were given their devil fruits after they joined. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, and then he ends here uh, uh, just speaking of, of this. Doflamingo seems to put a lot of weight on the environment in which people were raised. So, yeah, apparently people who have been through hell from a young age, uh, he seems to have he, te- he seems to take a shine to them. So the entire Straw Hat crew would also be qualified. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. I guess it's like a, a good good and evil versions of, uh, you know, what could have happened to them, I guess. Yeah, two sides of the coin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's next? Yeah. And then the last one here is about. Uh, Luffy's palm. Uh, someone pointed out. I should have looked this up before, uh, before we did this. I forgot about this question. Um, someone says, "Oh, hey, look! I, I looked at this picture of of Luffy, and I did a palm reading on him, and he's got the uh, he's got the special line. Uh, it's called the in Japanese. It's called the Maskake Sen, um, and that is apparently uh, that, that is apparently means someone who will achieve great things or will uh, you know conquer." And he's like, wow, that's that sounds like Luffy. Um, you know, that's no wonder he has the uh, Conqueror's hockey. Uh, yeah, wow, way, way to go, Odachi. Um, man, I can't believe you even, you know, put uh, the uh, their palm lines into uh, account when creating your characters. Wow, that's just incredible. <laughs> and uh, of course, Oda's like, uh, re- really? Oh, yeah, you know. I yeah I always I, I always you know make up their their palms before I draw them yeah that's that's definitely why I was like yep this is Luffy this has to be him uh, good job <laughs> so yeah there you go yeah I'm okay with that what le- that level of detail I'm gonna be honest mm, yeah it's, yeah it's fine with me uh, let's go to the next one on page yeah. one fifty four one fifty four is the next one. Wow, great header on this one. Definitely it, my favorite. Yes, yeah, so the return of uh, Usopp and Sugar's uh, shock face, the Tata Babasco face, um, and it looks like let's see. That is just first, so scary. Look, the first S is Usopp's left eye, and then the B is his tongue, and then the other S is Sugar's tongue. It's so freaky looking. <laughs> Somehow it's more freaky looking when they form letters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what, is, first what question... is he saying there? Oh, that's just the uh, question corner because they, they oh. always have to. So uh... he's saying question corner. As yeah. He... <laughs> okay. As he's as he's freaking out. Okay. Um, so the first question here is uh, it's kind of clearing up a bit of a, a technicality. Although I could have sworn that we had answered this already, um, but it is about devil fruit. He said. Uh, so if you if you take one little nibble of a devil fruit and then someone else eats the entire rest of the fruit, who gets the power? And uh, he says the instant that, you know, the first bite is taken, then the power goes to that person and the rest of the fruit is just a crappy tasting fruit um, after <laughs> that. Um, and he says, but no one else, no one seems to realize this and they eat the entire fruit. Anyway. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's pretty funny. Um, yeah, of course, that doesn't answer like, oh, well, well, what if they both take a bite at the exact same moment? Um, Milliseconds, but, people. Yeah, there's always... There Genius be... at work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so... I'm the, my question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the next question is about uh, the uh, revolutionary characters that we have seen in this arc. Um, Sabo, Koala, and Hack, what is their height, age, and what kind of uh, fish man is Hack? 
And also, uh, Hack's birthday is going to be August 8th because uh, Hachi and Ku, uh, Haku, um, that would be 8th. Is that nine. August 9th? Oh, oh. Was that, did I say something different? You said August 8th, sorry. August oh, 9th. No, August 9th, yes, sorry. Um, yes, and uh, so Sabo is 22. He is 187 centimeters, which is... Should I do the math then? I don't know. Yeah, uh, do you I'll, have I'll, to calculate I'll, I'll do that while you're, while okay. you're going with the other ones. All right. Um, Koala is 23, so she's older than Sabo, which uh, is... I guess that explains why in, in Japanese she always calls him Sabo-kun. And, uh, so wait, uh, Sabo is six foot, uh, 6.13 feet, so a little over 6 foot. Um, okay. I think and, that means you still. No, that would him. make him almost six two because a you know, six two. So I think Steve. The decimal point. The decimal points are uh, you know there's twelve inches, but only ten decimal points. So. Steve, you're still taller than uh, Sabo. So oh, cool. Could... I just got to work my way up to Brook. <laughs> uh, and you said uh, you said uh, koala. Uh, yes, koala is uh, 160 uh, centimeters, and she is 23 years old. And that's five and a quarter foot. Okay, so that would be five four. Five foot five four. Yeah. Um or five three if it's a quarter. <laughs> uh anyways, hack is two hundred and eighty centimeters and that tall. Is nine foot and uh, <laughs> nine point two around. And these awesome. are all estimations, so don't yell at me for doing math incorrectly. Mm-hmm. And then um uh the uh hack's nine foot uh, he's, two. He Thank is 38 years old, and his uh, species of fish is an uh, ebisudai in Japanese, which is uh, it's one of those things where there's like a bunch of different names, but it seems like the common English name is like a, either a deep water squirrel fish or a giant squirrel fish or a perch. It's, what the hell it's is one a of those. squirrel fish? He's a squirrel? <laughs> that so fits him perfectly. Wanna, he's, he's, in, look, he's one of those. Look at that puffy awesome. tail. <laughs> Come here, puff. Oh, I... I, what the hell is this thing? Uh, wait, <laughs> sorry. I gotta know. The the picture should be. Uh, you there's can tell it has that ridge seeing. fin. A hollow centridae, hollow centridae. Yeah, that's what comes up when I look up squirrel. Fish. It's got it's got the it's uh, from a family of ray fin fish, and it has the same thing that Hack has around his neck is actually the fin on its back. Hack mm. needs bigger fish looking eyes. That's what the fishmen are lacking. They're lacking like those fish eyes. Fish eyes, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> sorry to derail that. Yeah, enough of that. Um, let's go to the last question. Um, is a congratulations, congratulations on your engagement, baby five and Cy. <laughs> um, and then he asks, uh, "What about what about Cy's old uh, fiance, uh, who I had uh, translated as Ukulisha?" Uh, what what is she like? You know, the the name sounds very um f- sounds very gorilla ish and kind of uh kind of burly. And Oda says, uh I've heard that uh she she's uh, a cool uh, a, a lady with beautiful hair and a, a cool gaze. And then he drew a little uh a little picture of her and uh she looks like has... eric stoltz from mask <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right ed that's that's <laughs> eric stoltz one piece lady <laughs> uh he does he does have also she does also have the uh a little bit of the um the diamante um uh steven tyler uh mouth thing yeah. going on with the uh uh, the wide, the wide cheeks, but uh, yeah, the hair is very, the, the hair is very nice. I, I will admit that. She reminds uh, me of that girl Jabra tried to. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's kind oh, of Gath- like the holdover. Yeah, yeah, it's what was it again? Uh, Catherine. Catherine. Yeah. Not Catherine. How the hell yeah. do you? Re- how do you remember that? Uh, a lot lately. One Piece podcast, Zach. Oh right, right, right. Well, I've been watching season five. On to page one hundred ninety-two. Call anytime. <laughs> and on page 192 we have uh let's see the uh it's not the question corner anymore it's the sbs hard-boiled uh and did it, did it get any dirtier is that what uh, we're going no hard-boiled doesn't mean dirty it's yeah just, it just it, he's just manly it's just manly um and senior pink is like 
this fight, this fight don't mean nothing or this fight has nothing to do with me. And Frankie's like, oh, my God, that guy, he's so he's so free spirited. <laughs> Apparently he's just swimming away. He doesn't care about the fight. Uh, the first question here is about uh, Bartolomeo's barrier. Um, this, is good. this is a real throwback to like some of the very first SBS segments. Um, and also, I, I like, again, another throwback to uh, the Water 7 uh, era. His pen name is Hoikel Jackson. <laughs> Instead of... <laughs> I remember that now. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's um, freaking awesome. So, from, yes, he from says... From Michael, Michael and Hoikel, wasn't it? Mike, Michael and Hoikel. Michael and Hoikel. Yeah, Michael and I was Hoikel. Just, I was just reading that volume for the first Best time. Best friends forever. <laughs> yeah. Michael. No, I keep saying Michael too. Well, if I had, if I had like a Boston accent, I guess I could get away with that. Yeah. Reminds me of that ridiculous Michael Jackson parody they they had in uh, Naram and Daikon Brothers, Ugal Action. What? <laughs> it's a ridiculous show. People, more people should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Is he like on the television screen? Or I think so. Okay. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so watch yeah, Naram and Daikon Brothers. He says that. Uh, so what are the limits on Bartolomeo's uh, barrier ability? He says that. Uh, his his ability, uh, the amount of barrier that he can deploy at once is uh, limited. There's there's limits on the amount on the uh, like the surface area and also the number of barriers. Um, so he can only have one barrier out at once. Um, but the its maximum uh, volume or his surface area is fifty thousand body bodies. For barrier, berry berries. Uh, so wow, that's that's amazing. That's that's quite a number. And uh, also, one berry berry is a hundred times as much as one body body body. And that means that his defensive ability is actually five hundred uh, pickle potty potty body bodies. Um, so, of course, there you go. Yeah, it all makes sense. It adds up. My little bit of Japanese that I'm learning now makes a lot more sense here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the, the the kind of joke is that uh, body body and like body body are like they're kind of like munching or crunching noises. Like so, if you had like a like a carrot stick or something, that's kind of what it would what it would sound like um, if you did sound effects for that. So he he kind of uh, the, most of that is is playing off of that. Um, and uh, then we had a, a a great question. I believe we did cover this as well um, in the flashback, but. Uh, in chapter 765, uh, when Corazon and Law are on the run, um, there's a, a place where you see a palace in the background. And, yeah, gosh, it sure does look like the uh, the castle of the kingdom of uh, Livneal, where uh, Mont, uh, Mont Blanc Nor- Nolan was from. And uh, so um, he pointed out – now, I did not make this connection – no, I don't. I don't remember if we, if any of I us think did. Greg did, right? Um, well, with this thing I'm about to say here, which is that um, that was the place where they conquered. Uh, because remember, um, Nolan was he was a botanist, right? Yeah. Uh, in addition yeah. to being the uh, the commodore, and he uh, he helped them overcome uh, like skin diseases. And uh, things like that. And so he was saying, is it possible that Corazon took law there, in, you know, in, as part of their attempt to get rid of his uh, white lead disease? Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, he's like, I, I was just I was just imagining all of this on my own and I, I made myself cry. So uh, can I please have a handkerchief? And uh, this actually comes from uh, Kamiki-kun, who is I think he was one of the. The fellow Mania from Greg's uh, Hokotate Adventures. Um, oh. We probably, I'm sure you, you're probably following him on Twitter. Um, I'm sure the, I'm following yeah. them all, so I'm sure right, it's right. one of them. I just don't remember. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, and he says, "Yep, that's the that's the place." Um, and yeah, the, it still looks the same as it did, you know, the hundreds of years ago in that that flashback. And uh, and then Oda says, like, really, is that is that what he was thinking when he brought him there? Wow, I'm, I'm starting to cry, too. Wow. Corazon, man, he's such a great guy. And so Oda starts crying, too. <laughs> and uh, and then finally, uh, we have Corazon's birthday. Um, it has been uh, set in stone as July 15th because you can uh, you can make 
the numbers say, or you can rewrite them to make it sound uh, like a uh, silent Corazon or soundless Corazon, because uh, obviously he does, he, he's able to eliminate sound with his powers. And uh, there you go. So that's it. And that is the end of the SBS. He also throws in a, a little reminder that the, um, the Tokyo One Piece Tower is now open. Um, so come and check it out. And that is the end of the SBS. Uh, two things I want to note uh, before we round everything off. Uh, first, I think this is like in the very first chapter of this volume. They fixed, and I think we talked about this on our own, uh, the spelling of Don, Qu- Don Quixote uh, from mm, J to yeah. the X. And that is that is right. pretty fixed. There's a lot of other fixes. I'm not going to go mm-hmm. over. These are just a few that these are just two that popped out. And and Stephen, we had talked about that. You're like, no, yes. I'm not changing it. That's not. It can't be. Right. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So course. sticking with your guns worked. So good job, mm-hmm. Stephen. Um, and then I think probably the one of the funniest mistakes we saw was. Uh, <laughs> You know what I'm going to say? Yes, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, Usopp's magical bicycle has been fixed um, and is now a regular bicycle, but he still looks, like, stunned, and <laughs> that face yeah. he has is still very... Well, I would have just kept it. I would just kept it. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. Well, I'm like, like, yeah, he's freaking out because his bike's incomplete. If you're curious what the bike mistake looks like, you could look at our image from our last episode and see the original um because we used that as the episode image last week uh so yeah no that's that's all i had to say yeah no it's uh Usopp, think poor guy he's uh his his abs are are gonna be fine now he he won't uh <laughs> he won't be dying from like trying to support two halves of a bicycle separately um now uh so, so good for him. I think I think I agree with you with what you said at the beginning now that I understand all of the questions. Um, Kind of disappointing. I think for most fans, uh, like the the more casual fans, which I'm sure a lot of people listening are, this would be like, oh, these are some cool little things I didn't know. Uh, Mm. Unfortunately, since we're so immersed in this, it's most of this we knew. Uh, The last question was very interesting. Not surprised that it came from a from a mania. for those who don't know what Amania is, they're the I th- we talked slightly about it, but Greg was on Hokotate. He won one time. He lost the first time. But the people who are on with him are these, like Greg, uh, so, crazy the, dedicated One Piece fans. Yeah, they're like trivia masters, basically. For One Piece, mm-hmm. uh, which, I mean, way way more so than I think even us. Uh, oh, so yeah. it, does not, uh, it does not surprise me that they found that. It's just... They, they really do their homework. Um, and that's, that's some really interesting stuff. I, I may also cry, but probably not. Um, so thank you, Stephen, for coming on and going through this with us. Oh, it was my pleasure. This is the anime recap for episode 689, A Great Escape, Luffy's Tide-Turning Elephant Gun. It's too bad they didn't get the use the, the music from The Great Escape like that. Uh, that I was episode. thinking that. I was <laughs> thinking that. Uh, so I don't think we've done any segment, just us two in a while, I feel. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was the uh, anime recap. But. Probably. <laughs> we seem to lose everyone for this one. <laughs> five five this and a half was, minutes to recap this week. This was a good week, though. I actually thought this was a pretty good episode this week, uh, considering the, the content wasn't so expansive. Yeah, I mean, I took a lot. I ended up taking a lot of notes. Um, well, walk us through it, Ed. So, uh, Doflamingo continues to approach slowly, and the drops of water are like, ringing out like bells. Uh, the very the good use of silence this week. Yeah, they they really take their time with this, which normally would bother me, but it actually works, I think, for the suspense and the creepiness because Doflamingo is normally creepy, but it kind of <laughs> reminds you how creepy he actually is. Um, well, if he does not appreciate that, he, he tries to attack, and it does not work. Yeah, it, bounces, he, he, it bounces off like a bullet, which was a little weird. But yeah, uh, yeah. he fell for a, such a simple trap, though. Huh. And the flamingo. He's, like, he's the. It's we, what they need is Lassie there to say he, he fell down the well. He fell down the well. <laughs> That's all I was thinking. It's like this is the tropiest trope I've ever troped. It's <laughs> it's it's really like okay. Yeah. I didn't re- like it was in the manga and I don't think that ever occurred. Luffy's down the well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, uh, man. But, oh, he, uh, Doflamingo attacks Moosey with bullet strings. Oh, that was heartbreaking. Mm-mm. I forgot he did that, too. Yeah, me too. Made me, made me mad. Well, like, the first time he did it's like, okay, that's all we're going to have to see, right? Yeah. And and this is not a big spoiler at all, but Doflamingo, for some reason, hates and likes to kill animals. Uh, they don't explain why. It's just mentioned in passing and then showed very explicitly like this. Um, I, I don't know. Something must have happened to him with the... Uh, some animal or something yeah. or he's just a psychopath it's, yeah exactly that's yeah. probably what it is that's more likely mm-hmm. go ahead uh yeah so but he, he actually commends luffy for you know finding all these allies like he did during marineford but he still thinks that luffy is stupid and he chastises law for going so soft asking who made him a coward mm-hmm. uh but law, law says that he was saved uh so <laughs> dofi points the bullet string finger at him and uh, Abdullah and Jeet come in and attack from the back, but it was actually just a string clone. And he starts to unravel. That was a that was a cool scene. I forgot Abdullah and Jeet were the one who came back to do that. Uh, that, mm-hmm. that was fun. Although you'd think they'd be like, okay, we're squaresies now. That's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Kiros, who he looks so funny when he runs like that. I don't. <laughs> it's because the animators, I think, have a very hard time with that, which is understandable. So. Mm-hmm. Hoppy McHopperstein. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he's actually in a sniper's sights, but the sniper ends up missing because an old man interferes and uh, eventually he basically takes, and then uh, the the sniper takes one to the face from Kiros. <laughs> he basically gets neesened. But then the old man has the gun and he th- he's thinking about killing Kiros himself. Uh, you know, just to end, end the... End this is p- a weird implied yeah. filler scene. But then Kiros just some sort of jumps off the top of the bridge where they were fighting into nothingness and the scene ends. That's just the end of the scene is, okay, I'm going to jump off here now. Yeah, I, it was it was fine, but it was weird, that yeah. whole thing. So Abdullah and Jeet decide to describe how they were tricked by the uh, Funk brothers. But the thing and- is, in the manga, it made sense to go back and explain it. But here it made no sense since we kind of saw it already. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, it goes more with how um, Dofi took out uh, the Funks. Very quickly. <laughs> but Luffy is going to make his own shortcut now. Yes. Uh, back on up on level one, Kiros arrives at the trap well. Uh, so right outside where the, I guess, where the Funk Brothers are still laid out yeah. down there. and But uh, d- we see Dellinger, who is waiting saucily on level two. Yes, he <laughs> is. It's he's, while the Coliseum. He's, he's very Dellinger here. Yeah. While the Coliseum crew fight it out. I think we see Idio there in Chinjo. Um but we hear Luffy cry out for elephant gun, and that's gonna, that's going to be a good shortcut. But that's where we take our ad break. And coming back, everyone on uh, level two seems to be impressed by the erupting elephant gun that has come out of the well area down there. It looks uh, especially large here. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it can inflate to an infinite level, can it? <laughs> well, rubber can't, not infinitely, but, well, but to a extreme level. magic rubber yeah. whatever I don't know. Uh, and everyone is very impressed by it especially chin Zhao and dellinger um dellinger is impressed by everything that's just <laughs> like yeah uh so the schmucks crowd around the giant hole and luffy pops out of <laughs> that, it that sounds like such a bad sentence out of context um <laughs> go ahead and back to the sabo and fuji Toro fight um we see like, the gravity blades are the order of the day as he he starts swinging his sword and gravity comes down and Sabo fights back with his dragon claw, and they're, it, it shows, like, continuing the theme from before, that they are evenly matched. They, they go to clash again, and uh, really nothing is resolved with them. Yes. Yeah. And meanwhile, at the factory, the Tontadas have an idea to open the door, so Frankie is going to have to occupy Senor Pink for a while. Um, and then uh, Senor Pink takes uh, Frankie to Suplex City, bitch. <laughs> Every time, it's just like it's happened more than once at this yeah. point. Yeah. Um, the magic booby crew are taking hostile fire in the air, and Bartolomeo can't cross his fingers. The magic booby crew. That's ah, uh, that's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Bartolomeo can't cross his fingers, so he drops his pants. And yeah, this was a flash back to the Coliseum, and there is a piss geyser. Like, well, we did see that last time. In How, the no, but there was a comically large amount of urine. 
I mean, look, he drank a lot before. You have to be hydrated going into these kind of sporting events. Yeah. Um, I kind of like the way they set this up. It was ridiculous, don't get me wrong, but it was like, oh no, he's going to do that attack, that attack from the Coliseum. And you're like, what attack? From, uh, oh, the pissing that, one. That one. <laughs> he's going to piss on us. You know what? That would get me to run away. It's like when you're like, why would you run away from <laughs> if you have a gun? Oh, wait, he's pissing on us. I'm going to get the hell out of here. He's, uh, he's, he's Bart Kelly, or... Bart Kelly? Ah, fuck, damn. I messed that one up. <laughs> Don't look at me. Yeah. Uh, R. Kelly Lameo. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Gotta write that one down, too, even though... Nope. Don't write that no, down. <laughs> I'm writing it down. I'm not gonna use it, but I'm writing it down. Uh, go ahead. Uh, so back up in the Sunflower Seeds, Bellamy is walking towards the castle very sadly. Uh, he's at the end of his rope. He can't go on like this. Uh, and he's just sort of having like PTSD flashbacks a little bit. Uh, back up in the throne room, Doflamingo is just flicking Law's key up and down, and they start reminiscing about the day him and Dof- him and Diamante and Treble start reminiscing about the day that they met Law, and uh, Doflamingo actually thought that he would be his right hand man. It's a shame that he has to kill him. <laughs> shame, Flat- shame that now I have to kill him. Oh, but flashback time. Little Law wants to destroy everything. He's from the White Town Flavance. I'm getting excited just thinking about this uh, this flashback. What a cool ending this episode had. Mm-hmm. Like, kind of a mediocre episode, but the ending was just great. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that was pretty much it. Luffy continues to just his charge towards the castle. Well, and... I, w- I want to mention a couple cool things. First off, the animation looks fucking great in the yeah. little flashback segment. Mm-hmm. Um, the music they use, I don't even think they... It might just be silence, and they have the cranking of like the. the I think you're influenced. I think you're over influenced by how awesome like the ending segment was because this episode. No, no, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about the episode. I'm only talking about the ending segment. Okay. They use the machinery in the background. Really cool. The ending was probably one of the coolest things I've seen in the manga. Like of that kind of you know. In the anime, you mean? In the anime, I'm sorry. In a while of that kind of content, you know, we've seen some kind of cool action stuff recently too, but. That was very. That was a really cool teaser. Episode overall, super mediocre. Um, not that's not to say it was bad. Uh, just not a lot happened. But I think that really saves it from being a mediocre episode to being. Yeah, the, the a pretty first good episode. part. Some of the first parts were interesting in the well, and the ending was also good. But the middle was kind of weak sauce. Yeah. Uh, Fujitora and Sabo also kind of interesting, but there wasn't enough of it to really make it more interesting as an episode. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, okay, why don't we go into the next segment? Okie dokie. This is the Toonami Recap for episodes 295, 296, and 297. It's a triple recap this week, starting with episode 295, Five Namis, Nami Strikes Back with Mirages. Episode 296, Nami's Decision, Fire at the Out-of-Control Chopper. And finally, episode 297, Hunter Sanji makes an entrance, Elegy for a Lying Wolf. Uh, so don't get discouraged. Uh, we're going to skip all the recap. <laughs> well, we're going to tell you exactly how much recap we're skipping. Uh, each time. But before we do that, uh, let's get into some ratings. Uh, of course, we also have Jose here with us because it's hey, everyone. a tsunami recap. we got to have him. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start out with uh, April 4th. Uh, the April 4th ratings for One Piece at 2.30 a.m. got 660,000, uh, which don't sound great, but are pretty even with Naruto Shippuden that week, which got seven, 676, so only a couple off. And the thing is, it beat Naruto in the coveted 18 to 49 demographic with 412,000, with a 0.6 household rating. Just going through these quick. Uh, April 11th, not quite... Uh, better numbers, but not comparatively as great. Uh, 798,000 compared to Naruto's 953,000 for that week. 487,000 compared to Naruto's 579,000 with a 0.6 household rating. And finally, in trending news, uh, this is this is probably one of the cooler things I've seen. Uh, not really anything trended le- this, this week, uh, except... For, uh, aside from uh, Kirito and Attack on Titan, One Piece was the only trend, One Piece uh, in the United States, during and also during its West Coast airing, at number five, uh, Sanji at number eight, worldwide, very cool, um, and One Piece on the mobile app with uh, 7,000 tweets. So that's really cool, that that One Piece is basically the only thing that trended from a Tsunami. 
it bums me out that like we're getting into these really good episodes with nothing but fights and we're not at 830 anymore. Yep. If only they just waited a little longer, we would have been there. It was uh, it was just very poor helped. timing. I think it would have. I really think it would have. I think the filler kind of killed it. Yeah, because the longtime fans who are going to tune in are not going to tune in. <laughs> because they're, they're not good episodes. As We could barely do the recaps for them. Ed, anyway, let's get into the episodes. All right, first episode. Uh, over six minutes recap in episode 295, so there's that. Um, we start with a brief shot of the Gates of Justice. Oh, by the way, the six minutes are in the DVD version. Ed is going to be yeah, mentioning yeah, numbers. Uh, it's, I think, a minute less on the on the broadcast. Whatever. Uh, I mean, they, they keep all the recap. It's just the song that's... It's just the song that's... Which is... They should do the opposite. I'd rather have less recap <laughs> yeah. and more song. Uh, well, go ahead. Maybe not this song, based on my rankings. Yeah, also true. Um, so we start with a brief shot of the Gates of Justice, and uh, Spondum and Robin... Are arguing again. Spondum is basically just disregarding Robin's. Robin's in pain, but uh, Spondum's like whatever. Uh, he he's like he, he can't afford a man in his position cannot afford to be made to look foolish by taking his action back. And he, I think this is the one where he crouches down really far and makes it really stupid face. Yeah, you, you know the, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, right? I know, I know. I yeah, a plus facial expressions. <laughs> um, he cares nothing about nothing but his own reputation, and then he berates Robin some more. Um, and he talks about how much faith he has in Lucci, who will to be taking Luffy out. His power level is over 4,000. Yeah, I was <laughs> so expecting a, a moment there. Especially since we have Nappa's voice actor as uh, Jabra uh, in, oh. in this episode. Is that, the, is, is that the same guy from, from well, both versions? Well, not the ocean and, dub. Not the ocean dub, no. Animation uh, one. All right. Um, so... Uh, uh, yeah, Spondum. Not, uh, not that Napa was the one who even said it, but <laughs> I, I should before people start yelling at me. Uh, but yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, so Spondum hoofs Robin down the stairs again, and uh, Spondum's just sort of having fun abusing her at this point. Um, okay, so we get more Luffy versus Lucci. Um, this fight will go on for the next twelve episodes. So at, for this, at this point, they're just sort of um, tensely staring at each other and preparing to fight. And we see the opening, the opening volley. Luffy uh, gets a judo throw. He throws Luchi into some boxes. Luchi is pretty unfazed by that. And um, I just really enjoyed the fight choreography and everything uh, in this scene. There isn't a lot of cutting between, like, everything makes sense. Like, someone punches something that goes in one direction, and uh, they show, as opposed to just, like, you know, fist meeting leg, they show... they show it from further back so you can see their whole bodies moving and i think that looks pretty cool agree um I, I also like the fact that luffy's not really concerned with fighting him he's actually going for the door in fact yeah multiple times. he goes yeah. for the door he's not really caring about fighting luchi he just mm-hmm. goku, goku would not have cared goku yeah. would be like i'm gonna fight you mm-hmm. yeah I'm but uh luffy's going for the door he just keeps getting stopped yep um meanwhile soldiers continue to flee the island in fear of the buster call and uh Chimney and Gonbei are reunited with uh, Granny Kokoro. <laughs> and and G- Gonbei tells him about third gear. Yes. And she does she does that thing that kids, little kids do, and they're saying something like, and then, and then, and then. And I that was Gonbei, so, Gonbei is very well acted as as a little girl. Chimney. Uh, Chimney, I'm sorry. Gonbei, Gonbei is, is the rabbit. Gonbei is the rabbit dog cat. Oh, I wrote cat. Gonbei for all the notes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, at least I'm not alone here. Thank you, Jose. The, it, it's easy to mistake, I think. Yeah. And then the door went boom. <laughs> it's it's actually a really realistic portrayal of a child, like the way they talk. No, he, she, I they do a great job. I, I for, yeah. oh, I'm sorry, I forget the voice actress's name. I'll, I'll Kokoro's wine is kicking in there. Yeah, uh, she is really drunk later on. I think like in two episodes. Yeah, I, 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 I noticed with, like, that. Like four bottles. Yeah. Uh, it's like where is she getting all this alcohol? She has a gigantic flask, I guess. Hit in her pants. I don't know. Yeah. She, has, she does have a jacket. <laughs> yeah. Just goes into the ether, pulls stuff. Uh, out. Chimney, by the way, is is Lara Woodhall. Well, Woodhall. Oh, wow. Well, should have even said She's it. I'm the English names now. <laughs> I can't even do the English names. Uh, so yeah, we back up to the uh, the boudoir, and Khalifa announces to Nami that the climax has arrived. That's a little presumptuous. Um, but Khalifa proceeds to molest her with soap and Nami, uh, protests a little bit. I don't know. Why did you have to put it that way? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Everything about this scene is sexual. Well, maybe to you. It's yeah. not, it's not super sexual. It's not really sexual once Nami literally turns into a bubble. 
Well, we're not quite there yet. But at this point, we? Um, no, at this I think point, we are here. We are right there. Yeah. Right here where she gets Sanjified. She can't stand up. Sanjified. She was already getting Sanjified. She was already getting Sanjified, and then at this point, she pretty much becomes Sanjified. Yeah. <laughs> which is the technical term. I love this term. new word. I love this word. It's a technical term. It's in the manga. Look it up. She gets. Uh, <laughs> never read. <laughs> she gets her cool ball out, and uh, that means mirages. But suddenly, here's Chopper. And Khalifa's like, oh, you have devil fruit powers too. Uh, and um, Nami's like, oh, what a ditz. And that takes us into the ad break for that episode. Uh, coming back, the um, we get to the Kaku, Jabra, um, Usopp, and Zoro thing. Uh, so Kaku and Jabra are like, okay, we need to end this now. Buster Call is coming. We got to get out of here. And um, Usopp is freaking out as a, as, as a sword, and he's literally turning blue from fear. Uh, so Zoro tries to buff his his ego up, and it actually really, really works with the – they use that the, – the lacquer, the bait pun, the maki yeah, pun. Yeah, the allure pun. Yeah, that, that, that must have been That actually did one. translate well. Yeah. Did it? It translated okay. okay. Lure, lure. Yeah, it's, that's a – A lure, lure. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was it – was, I mean, Zoro was obviously kind of trying to trick him a little there too. Yeah. Um, or maybe not. I don't know. But it, it, it worked as well as it could have because it was clearly a very specific Japanese pun. Uh, I thought they did a so really good job. Zor- and yeah. Zoro waves him around, like, basically using him as bait, and that completes the pun. And uh, Usopp is just like, oh, killer attack means I die. <laughs> um, so back up with Khalifa. Nami recognizes that Chopper is uh is the monster and khalifa sort of hops up onto his shoulder and gives chopper like a scratch across his face she does barely any damage um but she will not be ignored and boom chopper can't be reasoned with so he goes to pull up the bathtub he rips out the bathtub and he chucks it down to the ground floor where sanji is sitting we don't see what happens with that for a couple episodes and he also Uh, busted a pipe of water Ah, the plot thickens. <laughs> <laughs> and so Chopper goes for a couple of double Mongolian chops, let uh, Khalifa and Nami get out of the way, and Chopper heads off to somewhere else. Um, and then, oh, suddenly there was terrible animation in this scene for some reason. Khalifa's forehead was suddenly 60% of her face. I don't know why. Her forehead grew 10 sizes that day. And it's a five head. Um so Khalifa is uh, – I like her as, like, the oblivious girl. She doesn't really get – I liked the uh, – I like I liked the... her comeback where she was like, I was joking. I knew that wasn't you. <laughs> but she's <laughs> clearly lying. Yeah. Um, I, I, that, was, that was really fun. And I, the, the, you could tell uh, Lucy Christian and – I should really know voice actresses better than uh, – Steve had to step out of her. But, yeah. I, I don't know any of them. Really. It, it was a good rapport. I liked it mm-hmm. in general. I think, I think it was done well. Which is weird because they don't record any of this together. Also true. Yeah. Makes it more impressive, actually. So uh, Nami has figured out the soap solution because she got wet. The soap uh, smoothing uh, goes away and she can move again. But she uh, is still pretty slow to move and she takes a kick to the face for her trouble. Uh, she drops the climb attack because her hands are still soapy and she can't grasp it. And uh, she uh, gets a finger pistol, which kind of... Which does not penetrate the skin because of, I think, the uh, the soap. Yeah, I think her own move yeah. just kind of worked against her, so she yeah. kind of just slipped away. Like, oh, hey. Well, no, no, she still got propelled. Like, she crashed into the wardrobe, but... Yeah, but it, she didn't take on the full brunt of it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Um, so we get a, the forecast is cloudy. She picks up the climb attack back up, and we have a little mini flashback to the flower surprise in Alabasta. The flower surprise. Yeah. <laughs> it, Got party that was the name. Yeah, yeah. But that was, that I don't was know if that's, that's the official name, but that's just what I've been calling it. That was, that was um, funny to see. I, I like that. So the forecast is cloudy. Here comes the rain. This is Nami's plan. And she sticks her tongue out to mock uh, Khalifa. As we see five Namis of various shapes and sizes, I say hit the one in the middle. But that's just me. That's the end of the episode. Well, we'll find out who they hit. Right now. <laughs> In episode 296, Nami's Decision Fire with the Out of Control Chopper. Seven um, minutes, 15 seconds of recap this yeah, week. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> Seven, uh, 15. From the, uh, from the Mirage tempo, she uses Thunder immediately, and it's super effective. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, first she takes time, like a minute to explain the science of Mirages to Khalifa. As though Khalifa could understand. It. Because it's anime, and we need <laughs> to explain this stuff. Well, it actually makes sense because Khalifa's clearly... Well, the way the the way Nami's painting her is is somewhat dense or ditzy. I think is the yeah. word she uses. Over explainer. Over explainer. Well, well, Nami is being over explainer. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So Khalifa gets scorched, and she's pretty angry about that. And I actually, at this point, I kind of wish that they would show all the Namis with their mouths moving in unison. <laughs> Because otherwise it'd be easy to tell which one's which, but they never actually show all five of them together when one of them is. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that was on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> and that would have looked funny though. Yeah. Um, but Nami says the next attack will end the fight. It's not a promise; it's a forecast. I don't know if she actually said that, but I wrote that down. <laughs> yeah, if only um, real weathermen were this accurate. Hey, she's better than Roker. If only real weathermen yeah. could create their own weather. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible idea because they'd make terrible weather all the time so they got more people listening or watching. Uh, she, so she fires her dark cloud tempo. And the bolt will strike Khalifa through her heart. But so Khalifa is like, uh uh-uh, uh, soap tidal wave. And uh, we see that only one Nami is left standing after the tidal wave. She managed to outrun it somehow. And she says, I'm going to poke more holes in you than my fishnet stockings. I like that. I just like that line. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, That's it's a funny good. line. Yeah. It's a clever uh, line. So the real Nami takes a, a, an actual finger pistol this time, but she's sort of fallen into Nami's trap that she's baited there. And the thunderball gets a, its thunder lance tempo coming from behind Khalifa straight through her chest, and then she barfs up a bunch of smoke. I think this was kind of suffered by the pacing of what was going on here, because I think it would have worked a lot better if it was just like one, two, boom. You know, like instead of, and mm. now I'm going to strike you through the back while you're not looking, mm, yeah. which kind of did ruin it a little bit for yeah. me. Yeah. That's anime for you. Yeah, that is. That's also just shown in anime. And Nami strikes a victory pose. Uh, but here comes Frankie climbing up the wall. Um, you see that all a brief scene of all the guys... Uh, trapped in the courthouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the Frankie family and Gali Law are tied up and left behind by the Marines. Mm-hmm. And it's actually, a, we do a lot of quick scenes right before this ad break here with uh, Chopper coming to interfere with the uh, Zoro and Usopp fight against Kaku and Jabra. And also Robin tries to run away from Spandam again. She gives him a shoulder into the side and starts running down the stairs to go uh, get to where Luffy is. And then we go to the ad break. Uh Coming back from the ad, um, we get some cheeky pigeon noises and Luffy crashing into some barrels. Because he was about to crash into where Hot Tori was. He's like, and flies off. (laughs) Um, And I'm still... I still... I love the karate, like the martial arts fighting between Luffy and Luffy. I can't say enough about it. The fighting in general, I think, through even all 12 episodes is usually pretty damn nice. I think that's probably the only... That's the saving grace of this fight is that it usually looks really nice. Uh, the pacing, on the other hand. Yeah. Go ahead. Luffy goes for the bite, but he, he manages to scratch Luchi's face, and Luchi gets a little pissed for a moment. He hoofs Luffy into some boxes and licks his own blood. So uh, Luffy goes for the door and takes a massive two-hit combo for damage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, But Luffy keeps coming back, and that's all we're going to see from them for a while. Yep. Uh, Frankie arrives in the boudoir and they and suggest that they have to kill Chopper. And Nami uses her fist of love, not not a happiness punch. That's completely different. Uh, she uses the fist of love to destroy his face, and the uh, Frankie learns his lesson, and the blood disappears pretty quickly. Um, but they do have to deal with Chopper's situation, as he could realistically take down the entire tower. Um, but Frankie, bright idea. There's always a way to deal with Devil Fruit users. They have one weakness, at least. Um, but then Nami remembers she has to get the key, uh, for, uh, Zoro and, uh, Usopp and Frankie with the line, that's some scandalous action. Yeah. Cause she starts tearing up Khalifa's clothes. Mm-hmm. I love that line. I, I, it was really funny from, uh, from sites. I, I liked it. I'm sure from Yao as well. I just don't remember. Well, I mean, doesn't he call her shameless woman in, uh, in Japanese? Maybe uh, that was. I liked I liked it as as like a compliment. It's like, oh yeah, look at this. Uh, because he has that's a thumbs what, up. No, but but yeah. in the, but in the Japanese version, I think the the line was, was ah, nice nice and shameless. I don't know. <laughs> that was, that's a little creepier. Um, I don't I don't know. Maybe that was a different translation by she, way back in the day. But she that, is that literally not... she is literally ripping her clothes apart. I mean, mm-hmm. if you were standing there, you would probably do it. And she starts it. right at the skirt. <laughs> Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. Uh, so back down with Usopp and Zoro. Uh, he's trying to bluff his way out of a really bad situation here, but uh, Jabra is like, yeah, I, I, but Kaku's like, what the hell are you doing, man? It's like, how can you be as tall as a giraffe and still have jokes go over your head? I love it. <laughs> That's great. Good line. Yeah. But they sort of resolve their differences, and they decide they're going to argue after they kill them. <laughs> yeah. Completely calm. Completely calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Zoro briefly loses a sword. Usopp has dropped 
the uh, nose storm, the sword part of it at least. And But he does manage to continue to dodge their efforts, but uh, suddenly a wild chopper appears, and Z- Zoro rightly notices that uh, chopper ain't looking so good. He's not doing yeah, so great. He, he looks exhausted. Yeah. It's like he's dying, basically. Uh, and the, Usopp... He's like he he knows what he needs. He needs he needs the key. He, that's what that's what he needs. Um, but Kaku and Jabber decide to deal with the chopper situation themselves. But suddenly Frankie shows up and he's like, knock him into the sea, blows him with a coup de burst. Yeah, coup right? de burst. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, or coup de vent. Um, no, coup de burst. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure knock, it was coup de burst. Knocking him through the wall and into the sea, and I'm and Frankie. Gets uh, Frankie chases after him and jumps out as Zoro is like, I'm going to kill you for what you just did. But now he's like, no, this is our plan. Um, we did this. Yeah. You could kill she's... us for this. Yeah. Not, and uh, and she also there. uncuffs them. Yeah. She's got the sexy key. Um, dramatic episode ending music. And uh, finally, get that Zoro Kaku fight we always wanted. Yeah. We've been going for it for a while now. Yeah. So episode 297, Hunter Sanji makes an entrance, elegy for a lying wolf. Only 520 and recap this week. I like that. It's the shortest one so far. I think it was actually shorter than uh, this week's anime episode, too. I They tend to be around five now. Yeah. yeah. That's that's an average now. I've never, I have not seen them at seven in a very long time. That's bad. Yeah. Uh, seven minutes something that might have been the worst one i'll keep track but i think that was the worst one yeah i think that i think you're right so far yeah mm-hmm. uh so beginning of this episode soldiers are fleeing the buster call and robin is trying to flee too down the stairs but spondum is in pursuit though he gets winded easily so he takes out his elephant sword to punish robin and it is such a ridiculous weapon and it makes funny noises but it still actually looks really brutal when it like well, this whole Spandam Robin thing just really makes you want to kick his ass. Like, yeah, he's, he's getting the heat on him. Yeah, it, uh, it's 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 effective. Yeah, no, it, it is. It definitely is. Um, so he invites her to come through the gate of dreams, which is a great euphemistic, like sarcastic euphemism for well, the for him. I guess it's his dreams. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so we see Pr- Frankie pulling a re- reverted chopper back in chibi mode out of the water. And Frankie, Frankie, like, he doesn't hold a grudge. He, he, I think he understands. Uh, so much water comes out of his mouth, it makes a rainbow. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun oh, sight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, weren't they and he's stepping on him. He's, he's not, he's not really, like, yes. doing CPR or anything. He's just stepping on him. And when he's talking to, he's talking to Chimney and uh, Kokoro, and he's just stepping, and you see the water go by his face as, yeah. as he's talking. So were, were Chimney and Gumbay just waiting in that box for anyone to show up? I mean, how long were they waiting? It's a good thing Frankie came by when well, he Well, I think he knew some. they knew someone was going to come by there trying to get across because w- – when do they do the, the painting on the side of the walls with the arrow? That's, that's, later, the that's later, later this episode. Oh, that's this episode? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. They blur together for me. I watched all three of these in a row, which was a much better watching experience, <laughs> I hate to say. But, yeah. Go so, ahead. yeah, Drunk Kokoro is back, and uh, she's dangling Chopper by his leg. Just hanging him up there with the bottle in one hand, a chopper in the other. Um, so Frankie runs off to deliver the key to uh, to where Robin is and uh, back up to the, uh, to get the, I guess, the garden fight. Yeah. Nami, we'll and, yeah, yeah. And it's it's <laughs> the, the Red Ribbon Army area. What do you call it from Dragon Ball? It's, I think we talked about that. Oh, the one. Ninja Murasaki? Yeah, it always reminded me of that. It looks exactly like that area. Uh, Nami's, uh, Nami uses a, a variety of nicknames for Usopp in this episode. I think Nose King, Nose Sop, and something else. I forget. Yeah. Um, Nami's kind of offended about it. (laughs) It's like, I don't even have Sniper or King in there anymore. Uh, Nami and Frankie know exactly where they need to go. They need to go to the gates of justice. Back in the gardens. Oh, so this is actually a little bit of a flashback from when they were talking up in the boudoir. Uh, Back in the gardens. Stop calling it that. I will not stop doing that. (laughs) Back in the garden, Zoro and Usopp are blaming each other for what's go- for for their predicament, but uh, Nami and Usopp just end up hiding in the hallway as as Zoro tries to fight off both of them. Um, so he's sort of paired off with Kaku at this point, and Jabra is sort of off. Well, we'll see him in a second. Uh, but Kaku insists that his deck is not a weakness at all. He can control it now. <laughs> Nose pistol, <laughs> and he, he shish kebabs a boulder. Those are. Great, ridiculous. With a, with a rec- I, Nami even points out, it's a perfect rectangle. That's incredible. Uh, I, I thought it was <laughs> yeah. hilarious, but okay. Um, yeah, and this is where Nami calls Usopp nose sop. Um, 
And Jabra throws his key at Usopp's feet. He's sort of sitting off to the side, and Nami and uh, Usopp are right there. And he's like, he claims to be a pacifist, but he's got that evil look in his eye. He's well, just a lying wolf. It's the, it's the, what do you call it? The pigs and the wolf? The wolf, you know. The wolf's in the sheep's coat clothing. Or yeah. that, or red, little red white riding hood. Uh, yeah, he's a tricky wolf. Yeah. yeah. I, but I love, I love it. It's great. Mm-hmm. And probably the bloodiest thing to happen to loose up in a long time. <laughs> Wait, what do you gets, mean a long time? In a, <laughs> in a little bit of a while. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, seriously, he gets punctured by ten fingers, and there's just blood all over the screen. Well, it's Kamehameha style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but he, he still gets right up, and he fires that sunflower star, because which does bandages. nothing. Which does nothing. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. There was more blood to come out of that than any Kamehameha I've seen in a while. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like, most of the time, at least. Yeah. Uh, so Jabra, Jabra's got Usopp down. He's gonna. He's basically JoJoing him. You know. Yeah. Ora, 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 ora. <laughs> it's exactly like that. And Nami tries to rush in and intervene, and she gets smacked too. I don't know what the hell she was thinking, trying to get in there, but she's um, gotta help her friend or yeah. ex friend. She has a stick. <laughs> and it, it's more than just magic tricks now, but uh, it's not. It's not going to help against Jabra. But here comes something that'll help. It's Sanji. He's back. And he kicks Jabba right in his turkey face or wolf face, I guess. But he's he is he is a turkey ultimately. Uh, it's the only time that Zoro is happy to see him. Yeah. He is the hunter. <laughs> uh, well, it it was going. Jabba was talking about like all these wolf analogies. Like he was the you're just the sheep that got away from the flock, and he and Zoro was the shepherd, and now you're lonely, and I'm just going to eat you, and you'll be delicious. And so I'm just, I'm the <laughs> hunter. Um, I hope we get that ridiculous animation animation sequence in uh, next week's episode uh, yes. with the uh, yeah with the, yeah, the yeah. Jabra Robin thing. Anyway, uh, so that that takes us into the ad break, and we get a stupid little mini recap after the ad break. I just like to point that out whenever it happens because it annoys me. I know you do. Yeah. Uh, so we find out that Sanji has gotten splashed with water, and he is now fixed. Uh, he's like a reverse bio Broly. He <laughs> was defeated by Rain, and is the lamest Dragon Ball Z movie villain. But That's the exactly. lamest Dragon Ball Z movie, period. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, so he, he quickly turns into a swaying love monster. <laughs> it's like, oh, Nami, did you declare your love for me as Zoro and Kaku fight through the background? <laughs> Yeah, I like that little juxtaposition. Um, and he also points out at this point, I believe he's he's pointing out the gates of justice are opening. Yeah, we, uh, we, no, there's a there's a scene, there's a little bit of an exchange between Usopp and Sanji first because Usopp is begging Sanji for forgiveness for being unable to protect uh, his crew. But Sanji reminds him, he's like, you know, there are things that you can do and things you can't do. He has to remember his limitations, basically. Yeah, just like Sanji needs to remember if there's a woman in the room, he can't do shit. Yeah. Uh, but the gates of justice are opening. We can see that through the hole that Chopper has left in the wall. Um, and so after we see that, we get back down to the Luffy and Luchi fight. They're still going at it, high intensity. Um, I think this episode was a little more cheaply animated because the fight choreography wasn't quite as impressive. They were doing more of the, the quick cutting to avoid like showing whole yeah. things. Still okay, but you know, it, it, it's got its ups and downs it's over these episodes. Yeah, and it's around this point. I wrote Gombe, but I think I meant Chimney. Uh, is... Well, first, first, Spandam drags Robin back up the stairs, oh. and then Chimney and Gombe. Well, Chimney, not Gombe, like I wrote down here, uh, is painting arrows to show everybody where everybody is supposed to go to the secret tunnel that takes him to the Gates of Justice. <laughs> especially Zoro. And I, <laughs> especially Zoro. But the thing I wrote is, where did she get the paint from? Where didn't she get the paint from? <laughs> it's, a, it's a military base. You don't just have paint it, lying it, around everywhere. <laughs> Ed, 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 it's mystery paint. That's uh, what yes. it is. Yeah, it's there you go. It mystery paint. Uh, God, I love. I do love this Zoro and Kaku fight. K- Kaku is like trying to taunt Zoro a little bit, at, um, but then Zoro remembers in his mind like what Polly said is like, "Remember to tell those guys they're fired," <laughs> and that and that's. But he never says it, which really annoyed me. And Zoro's, "You motherfuckers are fired." No, he says it. A few Later? episodes from okay. now. Okay, right, yeah. but he should. If we get the flashback, he needs to say it then. I, I like. mean, he's. I mean, I remember when he says "You're fired," and he puts on sunglasses, and the Who starts playing. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, do, I do remember that. Sorry. Uh, and but, then there uh, are flames all around him because it's also a pond yeah. for some reason. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, that. So uh, into the in the courthouse, Polly and the courthouse crew are freed. Polly was just pretending to be tied up with his own ropes the entire time. I, I love that little bit. It's just it makes so much sense. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Then we get a brief scene at Marineford with John Giant. Uh, the ten ships have left. They're heading to Annie's lobby at a high rate of speed. And finally, the last scene... They do get there around. quick, if I recall. Yeah. Like, they get there pretty damn quick. Well, yeah. But, um, so, arcing back around to the scene between Usopp and Sanji before, Sanji reminds Usopp what he is best at, and that as long as he is okay, they have a chance to prevent Robin from going through the gates of justice. Because he has sniper powers. And that's really, and that's where the episode ends. Do the, not to spoil too much, but do the ships go through the gates of justice from Marineford? That's why they're opening. Here, uh, oh, that's why they were opening? I thought they were opening just because Robin was getting closer to the... I, yeah, I thought they were just opening for Robin. You know what? Mm. We'll find out in later yeah, weeks. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Jose, what did, what did you think of these three? I really like these episodes. Um, I wish they had aired at 8.30. Yeah. Because, uh, no. man, they are really good episodes. Uh, I mean, the thing I hear from speaking to people out in public and, and people who watch tsunami the thing i always hear about one piece is like oh there's not enough action and i'm like you're not watching the current episodes <laughs> you need to be watching the current episodes it's all fights from here on out and it's all very good fights and this is some of the best the stuff yeah i mean the zoro stuff i think picks up a little bit more next week if i've a uh, sanji stuff maybe next week anyway these are like the big three fights we have what, what what's left sanji zoro and luffy yeah um and, and these really make up the crux of like the craziest fights in any lobby so uh yeah. it's what jose said i wish it was 8 30 uh keep tuning in at 2 30 yeah you don't want it to go away completely so keep, yeah. keep doing that um 2 30 a.m tsunami on adult set swim. your dvrs set your dvrs you could also watch it on adultswim.com if you have a cable subscription which i i do that uh if it's hard for me to stay up that late unfortunately i'm older hey I'm yeah old. <laughs> I, I i am also old i dvr everything i mean i assume adult swim tracks the numbers that they get on the site as well somehow. yeah of course yeah, uh so. nielsen counts that as well i believe that they take that into account then i will uh continue doing that <laughs> uh not not in the ratings that we see yeah that, but those it, are different ratings um also if you use any eight like for example sling tv app or something similar to that that also counts uh so you know as long as you're watching one piece on adult swim it tweeting. counts Tweeting and tweeting about it, please. Um, you guys did a good job with that this week. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I can't stay up at two thirty to tweet and stuff, but um, it's just it's it's too it's late. It's very very late. If you want I if mean, you want if you want someone to live if you want to follow someone who live tweets it, Sai does it like every week. Yeah, so. yeah. So Sai yeah. Sai, Sai, Sai X Chen. It's, I try to. I just I've been going out these past couple Saturdays. Yeah, it's also true. I had a wedding with Ed. Uh, not together, not to each other. <laughs> but we both went to one. You don't we're ruining my back. ship here, man. <laughs> no, that's later. That'll that'll happen another time. Uh, <laughs> let's go to the next segment, guys. Ready? All right. Is that what fourth gear is? <laughs> <laughs> This is the Piece Together segment where we take your questions, comments, theories, and anything you may have to say about penises or boobs. That's all we're taking this week. I'm sorry, Oda's not on this week, so we're actually going to expand a little further. I'm sorry, guys. I know you were looking forward to that. Um, Dang. I've been off the show for a long time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we actually have had Oda on for regular segments, and he only answers questions about penises and boobs. All right, guys. (laughs) Excuse me. Why does he sound like George Lucas? Um, mm, you're my movies. <laughs> anyway, our first piece together uh, question, uh, very apropos to what we're talking about, comes from Eric. If you could ask Oda any one question, what would it be and why? And it can't be about boobs or, or dicks. <laughs> you're sure uh, I can use CG to make them bigger? <laughs> I don't know if I'd even ask anything about One Piece, you know? Yeah, I think uh, I think Greg talks a little bit about this when he was talking about when he met him, and it's it's that thing you know with Luffy you can't ask it'll ruin the adventure you know ask him I might ask him about the process you know like what what has it been like for you you know dance. I am Ichiro Oda you may ask me three questions and three questions only Wow are you really Ichiro Oda Yes <laughs> really Yes. Really? Yes. I have answered all of your questions. 
Uh, Steven, I think you probably have the most reason to answer this question, or the most, uh... Um... Would you ask him about Gear 4, even though you know the answer already, Dan? No, I know the answer. <laughs> um... Man, I don't know. There's probably something, like... If me and Greg put our heads together, we could probably come up with a list of, like... Like, just the most miscellaneous things, like... What the hell is this attack name a reference to, and and things like that? Uh, since that's uh, you know, given that I'm a translator and Greg has to write these columns, and is obviously you know super fascinated in all the minutia, uh, it would probably be something like that. That'd be a really cool idea, just to get you and Greg to sit down talk for like a couple hours and figure out i know neither of you have a couple hours but to talk about like a couple questions you'd ask oda and if we ever had the chance to ask oda questions that's i'd get that brain trust together i think if you'd like to increase those chances please donate to our patreon we might make opp japan too i don't know if that i don't know if that increases our oda chances but um yeah Shh, they don't know that <laughs> well, now, now they do, now they do. <laughs> Next question comes from William. Just a bit long, so I'm going to paraphrase. Uh, he says he's been watching Season 6 Voyage 4, and he noticed that uh, Lola gave Nami a, a V-Ray card and says it will lead her to her mama, mother. Um, and she says to, for Nami to put in a good word for her. Now, I st he said he started thinking, who could the mother be? And he thinks that with her round body and shape, Lola's, I uh, it's probably Big Mom. And not only that, but since uh, Nami and the others were abducted uh, by Big Mom... Uh, the Vivre card and Lola's good word probably come into play here. Uh, we've actually talked about this one quite a bit at length. I agree with most of it. What, what do you think, Steve? What, what do you What do you agree with? Uh, I agree that I do think Lola is uh, Big Mom's uh, daughter, or at least uh, affiliated with her. And I think uh, instead of uh, being like captured or fighting uh, Sanji and the rest of the the twirly brow pirates they're just hanging out i've i've thought that uh you know it's it's been definitely been floated around a lot ever since uh like the Throw name big mom yeah, yeah. came up that that was um that, that that was the connection was with lola however once we actually saw big mom's uh like crew that one little glimpse of them that we got and they were all calling her mama it makes me think that lola is not actually blood related she's mm -hmm. just a crew member yeah, that's why I said either, you know, yeah. uh, daughter or just subordinate. Right. I think either is possible. I think if – I think – How would Big Mom procreate I think them? it would be more impactful if she was her daughter because, you know, like Big Mom might be like, I don't care what one of my subordinates says. But if it's her daughter, you know, it's like some moms, you know, they'll do anything for their kids. You Good know, point, so. yeah. But she's, she's the Big Mom. She, they're all her kids. <laughs> <laughs> big, I... big Mama's ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta write that one down too. Even Hallelujah. Though. Sorry, um, next one comes from Fury, unless anyone had anything else. Um, yet another Gear Fourth post, and he wrote Fourth as if it was a swear, um, which is probably <laughs> oh, the right word. Well, oh, that'll probably be a translation. Gear, Gear, Gear motherfucking fuck. Four. <laughs> gear Four. No, it, no, it's just Gear. <laughs> the censoring. Stephen, yeah. is that what you're going with? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, that's the manga stream version. <laughs> <laughs> uh what if luffy copies uh bellamy's bonnie bonnie no me um what is it in english I, uh, I spring even, spring fruit it's a spring spring okay that's what yeah. I, thought. I haven't heard bellamy's japanese name for that so mm -hmm. um so what if luffy copies bellamy's spring spring fruit as a uh, gear fourth and uses that to defeat uh do flamingo i.e the good year michelin tire luffy too much too much like gear third uh that would be too much like uh, Gear Third hockey, and the Weed Whacker Luffy might overlap with Zoro. Uh, That'd be kind of cool, but I feel like usually Luffy has these moves planned ahead before. Um, like he's used like certain like just like a fighting move, like based off of like Genzo's pinwheel. Um, I don't like I, I don't know until the chapter comes out. I honestly think if you uh, if you really hang on the words Del Flamingo says, like oh you're. Your punches have no weight behind them. I think it's weight related. Uh, Ed, do you have any opinions or no? Uh, not really. <laughs> cool. Uh, these are the kind of things that I think about. Uh, Steven, what do you think it is? <laughs> what do I think it is? Um, well, it involves his penis. Um, no. 
Um, I want to I want to bring up John Oliver, but I won't. Uh, next one comes from. <laughs> speaking of Oliver, um, well, because he mentioned, I'm not even getting into it. Um, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking. About. Okay, good. Uh, hey guys, I have a couple of ideas as to what Gear Four could be. How weird! Uh, this is why we got a lot of questions this week. They're mostly Gear Four theories, but I don't want to discount people here. They're not. It's not like they're bad theories. Just we got a lot of them. Um, this one, he says the same Bellamy theory, uh, but he gives it a little more complex, uh, twist here. Um, last chapter we saw gear two didn't hit hard enough and gear three was, uh, too slow and left Luffy vulnerable. Uh, gear four could have a way, uh, the, we kind of talked about this, the destructive power of gear three without sacrificing maneuverability. Uh, Luffy goes into gear three, filling his arm with air. He then uses the muscle strength to shrink his arm. Uh, while, uh, I think this is the theory, uh, while still filled with air, compressing the air until the arm is a normal size, perhaps with some de defer deformation. I want to say deformation, but that, that sounds like defamation and that's not the right thing. I uh, like which surely ain't desecration. <laughs> like with Chopper's arm point. Uh, the arm now has the same mass as Gear 3, but the arm is very dense, like the air in a tire. That's kind of that Tor uh, Akira Toriyama thing we were talking about last week. Um, mm. You know, when, when you shrink things, it becomes stronger. But as Greg said, I think Oda might have the opposite in mind. And it's it really annoying me that Steven knows the answers to what we're saying. It's just sitting there, and he's just like, I yes, I know. I will say it, does, it doesn't have anything to do with defecation. Okay. Stop. <laughs> Every time he says something, and I think it's going to be so, a serious answer, <laughs> turns nope. into something about penises or shitting or I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go to the next one. Um, sorry. We have, we have a lot of these uh, different ones. Uh, okay. This one. Getting a little further away from Gear 4, uh, Milo says, Several months ago, I asked a piece of the tweet question uh, to see what ge the general consensus uh, would be for a One Piece fairy tale debate. Uh, since he said we did a One Piece Dragon Ball debate way back in the day, while well, people remember that. Uh, that oh, was, yeah. Wow. It wasn't really a debate, though. It was just kind of a just, discussion. I yeah. think I cross call. Epic, right? Wasn't yeah, it was that Cross one? Epic. Yeah, it was not yeah. supposed to be like, which is better. And it was with the Daisenshu guys, who are now well, the Konzenshu guys. My yeah. boyfriend's better than your boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> and didn't didn't someone like try to have an actual like one piece naruto debate like afterwards i don't know yeah there was someone a whole did thing. something like i i don't think this that was all five happen. years ago well first off i don't read or watch fairy tale at all uh mm -hmm. steve you stopped right i just i i decided i was reading too many series and not finishing any so i kind of took a break and i think i focused on ice shield 21 and I, you kind of got me wanting to read some art is it uh, Arakawa or is that FMA? Yeah, that's FMA. Uh, Arakawa, yeah. Uh, Monster. Oh, oh, Urasawa. Urasawa. Yes. Urasawa. That yeah. should definitely be your next one. I kind of want that to be my next read. Uh, yeah, I, I said I would shove those down your throat if you had. But Fairy Tale, yeah, I want to get back into, but um, I don't think. Uh, oh, who doesn't now? It's not Del Rey. Uh, I don't think they have a yeah, digital. It's uh, Kodansha. Yeah. Uh, Kodansha, yes. Um, it might be know. digital on a Crunchyroll. My problem, my problem with buying manga volumes now for long run series is I'm running out of bookshelves. So no, another thing too is like it's interesting to do a One Piece Dragon Ball uh, discussion because not only you know just aside from the fact that they did that crossover, but you know there's like a lot of history between you know a, there's a direct sort of like uh, influence. Uh, and, you know, they have a similar stature in terms of the history of Jump, and, like, there are lots of, of ways which make their relationship unique, and just having, you know, like, a com a comparison between One Piece and another series that is very similar, at least art-wise, to One Piece, but is otherwise, like, has nothing to do with it, like, it's... It, I, don't, I don't think it makes sense to, to well, do that. I, if, like, so, putting it out there... I, first off, I think we would, unfortunately, need to be interested in it in order to want to do it. And right. so, like, stuff that would make sense, like Toriko, would probably make a lot of sense, but unfortunately... And, and I do say, unfortunately, it's a series I want to get more into. I just don't have time since it's so long-running. Like, um, I've been buying the books, but I might switch to digital. For Toriko? Yeah. Yeah, I, but that, that that would be a series that makes sense. I'm just not at all caught up or anywhere close to getting caught up in that series. I, I would I would really need to sit down to do that. And and frankly, as uh, Steve said, I would rather spend my time on like Urasawa or 
uh, rereading One Piece or reading new series. Like uh, I got the Satoshi Kon one recently, uh, Tropic of the Sea. I need to read that. Or oh, reading, I need to read that. Or reading Stevens. I, I need to read Vinland Saga at some point. Mm, oh, yeah, that. you do. Yes. Um, so I have a long queue as to what I want to read. And I think if we were to do one, it would have to be something that One Piece is very directly involved in. So I, I say this with all seriousness, uh, Naruto, Toriko, you know, stuff where Oda has, or uh, My Hero Academia at this point, maybe even, or um, what's the other one that he recently did something with? I can't even remember. Like, there was a newer series, I think, Oda did. Mm, he and, he oh, did the, that Kaku, oh, was it Kakusen? Some, something like that. Oh. It was like a girls fighting manga or something. Oh. Or the one on on the that I think William announced the dancing manga one. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, that's not out yet. Right. So when it comes out, uh, but there's there wouldn't be a lot of discussion, I don't think. No, uh, no. But like that kind of thing, where there's clearly a crossover of interest, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Fairy tale, unfortunately, doesn't. Um, even though they're very similar, I don't think it's similar in the flattering way. Um, okay, uh, let's go to the next question. Unless anyone else has anything they want to say. Um, so what I got from this is we're going to do a Ghost in the Shell One Piece comparison. Is that uh, what's going on? I'd yeah, like yeah, yeah. you to ask me series that we're going to be <laughs> into. I'm into both. Let's do that. <laughs> they seem so common. Um, no. Uh, even JoJo might even because Oda did that O to it. But I don't think. Oh yeah, JoJo. I don't know if there's like. I don't know if Oda's like done too much specifically with JoJo to warrant that. I'm um, surprised we didn't mention JoJo. It just hit me. Uh, like a like a punch repeatedly to the face. Uh, this next one comes from Toon Legion. Uh, he says three things in quick succession here. He says quick succession, so I'm going to say them quickly. First, exactly how effective do you see Gear Four being against O Flamingo? Um, a new gear doesn't necessarily mean the battle's going to be over. Uh, so, what do you guys think about that one first? Uh, except for Stephen, who could only talk about how it has nothing to do with defecation. Steve, or Ed, or someone. Uh, well, I mean, the... <laughs> <laughs> Go see how long that went. Uh, the, I mean, gear, what was it? Second gear basically ended the fight with Bluno from the bar, so who knows? Yeah, but Bluno from the bar wasn't <laughs> the main villain. Gear third didn't effectively end Lucci, and I know, I know you've read that far or watched that far. At yeah, so, I know, but, but it could, it, you know, it could happen. It still took a lot of perseverance after. Um, I, I personally, I was, I was that's how like, I see it. what? Gear four? I thought there was only two. <laughs> no, he's, he's seen three. I've um, seen that. It just, spoiler alert here, Jose. It just Spoiler takes, alert, there's a fourth gear. You guys have been talking in my ear about it for like the past it, it half hasn't, hour. It hasn't even happened yet, but it's about to. Is So this is how long it takes if you're No, I, I figured. We're not telling you what it is, so we don't know what I, it is, it, except it, for it, Steven. I could, I could tell. Yeah, Jose is like the only guy who knows, and he, he has no context for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's defecation. I listened. I was listening. No, no, it's not defecation. Anyway. Um, that's what Super Saiyan is. Uh, it's it's defecation. Super Saiyan defecation. I mean, that looks like what they're doing. Um, that's the end of the resurrection like of F. <laughs> <laughs> it's when you when you need the cyclone to get rid of your constipation. Uh, Steve, we, we focused really hard on that joke. Yeah, I, I don't even remember what the question. How was. effective do you think Gear Four will be in ending the fight? Do you think it's? I don't think it's going to end the fight. Um, okay, I think it'll definitely tip the odds. A little, little yes. or completely, but it, it are you saying it. that he's not going to use a gear four attack to end the fight, or only the first gear four attack will not end the fight? I think it'll be like Lucci. The gear four will severely start to wound him and take him down a couple notches, but not like the first attack. I think the, the I think the, the attack that takes out Doflamingo is going to be a, a gear four attack. It's well, I don't know what gear one. four is yet. <laughs> you see, people are going to be listening to this, and they will already. There will be people listening who will already know what gear four is, and they're going to be like. What are these idiots talking about? It might not even be something that, you know, could end it. Who knows? I, or maybe it's not something sustainable. Time skip. I don't want a time skip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because it's it's going to be th- – these are going to be one of those weird episodes in retrospect where we're kind of trying to guess what's happening. But uh, Not but, for uh, Steven. He's going to be like, I knew the whole time. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Steven, Steven has the perspective here. And he was – well, I'll say he was right. It wasn't defecation. Uh yep. Next quick question here. Uh, he says his, he wanted to list his top three openings uh, backwards. Kokoro and Ochizu fight together in Jungle P. Uh, he goes into it similar to what we've said. Um, uh, he also said Hard Knock Days is pretty catchy. Uh, but 
so far, but pretty standard. Um, and his third one is to say, is saying, excited to hear you guys are coming to Dallas again. Won't make any promises, but I'll try to come to the meetup if I'm able. And I forgot to mention it this at the top. So if you are going to be in Dallas and would like to come to our meetup, please email us with the uh, with the subject header OPP Dallas. Uh, so yeah, maybe tell us a time that's good for you because these yes. things haven't always worked out for us. Yeah, we we gotta we have to figure out how many people are interested and if there's like. You got to be like definitely interested. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I may, I may come. Uh, like, please, like, uh, not to be mean. Just don't waste our time. If uh, oh, I wish I could go, but I live in Europe. I'm like, yeah. Oh, thank you, man. I, I we appreciate it. Some don't of us are going to be there for an extremely limited amount of time. Obviously. Yeah, and and we would want to film if there were people there. I mean, yeah, and we and we got to think of a good place to meet up. I'd say if it's a nice day out, we should do like some sort of park or. It is Texas in... Where all those museums are wouldn't be bad. Uh, well, that's like in the middle of... Da- well, maybe we could do that. I don't know. Dallas don't is know. a freaking huge city. as Yeah. Uh, size of Connecticut, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is... Oh, hey, like, if, if you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, if you're definitely interested, give, well, just like let us know how far, you know, just where you're at. I don't know. Well, Generally, Zach, where you're Zach, at. Zach will make a spreadsheet or something. Yeah, know. yeah. I'm very. I've been doing that a lot lately. So yeah, let us know generally the vicinity of Dallas Fort Worth you're in. Let us know what day and or time works for you. And it, we're going to be there by the way from the 22nd through the 25th. Most of us will be gone by the 24th. So if you want to make it the 23rd, I think that's that Saturday is probably I the best. I think that time. Saturday is probably going to be our best bet. Yeah, because otherwise you won't see all of us. Uh, so we're aiming for that Saturday. Keep that Saturday open if you want to see us. Yeah. Um, Especially if you want it on camera. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise we could do it other days too. So you want to be a star. Uh, uh, next question comes from Jason. Uh, a little off topic right now, but who do you Jason? think. No, not that, Jason. Uh, A little off topic right now, but uh, who do you think the last warlord is? The way they have been danced around makes me certain that it is a character we have already known or seen. Uh, He thinks either uh, Gin or Jin. Gin. 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 I I felt like I was pronouncing that wrong. I I thought it was said this was one of the characters that escaped Impel Down. Did they say that? Stephen, you would. Mm, I don't write. No, I don't think so. Okay, I might. It, just it was using that with a yeah, theory. Yeah, they they just did the they did the list of the six, and he was like, and the other guy I mentioned, or the other <laughs> and person. And that I guy mentioned. whose name right. escapes me. Uh, I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, Gein or Lucci uh, are his top two picks. I think <laughs> yeah, Lucci. It's an interesting guess. I don't uh, think that's true. No, but... I, I think Lucci yeah, was that silhouette. It's like, like, apparently, the government wanted to get rid of CP9 because they failed. So they, they were runaways, and then it's like, hey, come back. Hey, Jose, you could totally just answer. This is like, you don't completely have the context for this, but I guess who would you want to see of the, you know, of the current cast that you know uh, as a warlord? Uh, huh, I don't know. That's don't a very good question. Uh, blue enough from the bar, since I mentioned him earlier. <laughs> that, would, that would be fantastic. I mean, I want to see the Don Krieg 3000 or whatever the hell it was called. Oh my god! I hate all of your answers. Eneru and the Spacies. Eneru wouldn't listen to shit. <laughs> Eneru right. also, hey, yeah. you, want be, you want to be the government's pal? He's like, let me think about that. <laughs> What's the government? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Can I eat it? No, that's Luffy's answer. <laughs> What's the government? Can I eat it? Um, okay, next one uh, comes from the Admiral. Hey, crew, so One Punch Man Saitama uh, works, workout schedule includes 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and a 10,000 uh, probably kilometer run. Uh, maybe Ed might be a bit curious, being a Zoro fan, uh, but do we uh, know what Zoro does in order to get stronger? We always had glimpses of him working out. Has Oda ever answered that? I was all, always interested in these small details about characters. You're in the right place. <laughs> uh, um, clearly, he sleeps. He does a lot of sleeping. Do you know this, Ed? I no, I mean, they, they show him lifting heavy weights. That's, uh, that's, it seems like that's what he does. He just lifts heavy weights. Well, he does do uh, he does do those weird push ups and sit ups with weights. Like yeah. he'll incorporate. He the picks weights things up and puts them down. You know what? That is <laughs> every true. morning he eats three dozen eggs to help him get large. But well, after the two uh, two year time skip, now he eats five dozen eggs. 
So, so he's, he's roughly the size of a barge. No, he's and, just about the same size. He's a little buffer, though. And to make sure that he stores up and saves all of his energy, he sleeps, you know, 13 hours a day. <laughs> he's especially good at expector rating. <laughs> expector rating. <laughs> Uh, yeah, other yeah, I don't think we've we we've, we've gotten the one piece workout. Uh that's an SPS question right there. Yeah, it is a great ex- SPS question actually. Does that the is, insanity does. challenge. <laughs> <laughs> or he does uh what's it called? Mud runner? What's the one where you go through the oh, uh, tough, tough, mudder. Mudder. tough mudder? Yeah. Um, or a Spartan race. Yeah, I could see Zoro doing that and really loving it too. He takes pole dancing classes. That's what he does. <laughs> Thank you, Jose. Yes. <laughs> He'll be your private dancer. Uh, so for berries. Do Liam Tasker you? has our next one as Steve <laughs> sings that. Uh, hi, OPP. Do you think we might uh, meet some animals in Kaido's army who ate the smile human human fruits? It'd be interesting for Chopper to meet others like him. That'd be pretty like, cool. Uh, like Peekums ate the, the human human fruit. Peekums didn't eat a human human. Well, no, but no, like Peekums is a Peekums is, is, is an actual called? lion that I think ate a turtle fruit. No, no. Is it? Oh, yeah. He also has is he a, a. Is he a mink man? I th- yeah, I th- I, yeah. That's where I was going with that. Hmm. I think that's what he is. He's a mink man who ate the turtle fruit. I think is what happened. I forgot he had those turtle powers. I bet he shags like a mink. Turtle power. <laughs> uh, I knew someone was going to say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> next one comes from Ben Wild. Hey, podcast uh, people. Seeing as there's no chapter this week, and my hometown hosted the world's largest trivia contest this weekend, I thought it might be fun to turn the tables and ask you some trivia. We'll make a twenty dollar donation to the podcast for every one you get right. Wow. Really? I better not answer any of them. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm here then. Okay. Yeah, that's true. And Stephen too. Uh, damn it, Greg. You couldn't be on this week. <laughs> uh, are you up for it? Okay. Uh, we have to get these right. There's a lot. There's a lot at stake. What's here. stopping us from just looking it up on the internet? Uh, the honor system. Okay. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't. That's not cool. Right. Um, there's no glory in that. At trivia. Just be really careful, Zach. Make sure the edits aren't really obvious when we're listening. To the <laughs> 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 no, I think that I think <laughs> the answer is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that works as well in The Simpsons when you can't see it. Yeah, suspense is killing yeah. Anyway, first question, okay? Where is Panda Man first seen in the anime? I'll repeat that again. Where is Panda Man first seen in the anime? If you know, please buzz in by saying the word buzz. That's not a good sign. <laughs> no, I don't well, know. it's pretty much, I have to guess. Well, uh, okay, Steven, um, I want to yield to you well, because you're definitely the most knowledgeable. In the anime? Oh, in the anime. Steve, I'm, I'm yielding to you. Never mind. Okay, I'm just going to try. Uh, I'd say the Kuro arc, part of uh, Kuro's crew. I think where – okay, so you're saying on – what's the name of that island? Syrup Village? Uh, 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 in East Syrup Blue. Village. East Blue. That's a nice that's a, What was it called? It's Syrup Village, right? Syrup yeah. Village. Yeah. Uh, what's the is these the the island has a name. It was like an it was part of an archipelago. Oh, wasn't it a, was it Shimotsuki or was that Zoro's village? I think that's it might have been Zoro's village. That's Zoro's village, the Crescent yeah. Village. I remember asking as a trivia question in our own, there were like three archipelagos mentioned, Shawbuddy and like two others, and one of them was a uh, one of them was a uh, Usops. I just don't remember. Boing. Yeah. There was Boing. Yeah, that was the other Boing. one. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, all right, so we are going with uh, Syrup Village slash Kuro. That's going to be our answer. We'll look these up after so we get a peace of mind at the end. Um, yes, next Zach, question. I am not looking it up. <laughs> no, don't, don't. Uh, next question. In what short does the Konami show up? What the hell is the Konami? Like the Konami logo? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I, I was I, thinking of the logo name. Like, he's, asking, even, he's asking some good questions. We're not getting a set. I can't even we? answer that because I don't even know what that is. I feel like Stephen. Do you know what that is? Uh, this, you said short, right? So this is probably an anime. It's probably like a movie short, right? Well, what if it's some of the other manga? All right. Well, it could. Yeah, it yeah. could be one of the manga shorts. The what do you call them? The corners. The amake corners. That's what they call mm-hmm. it. If it is, if it's the amake corner, then that sounds like it would be. Like a, the Japanese one, like where it's like Luffy, Luffy Amon or whatever. I don't know. Right. Yeah, this is a, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going along with the theme of Ed's good, good answers being ones he agrees with, the good questions are the ones <laughs> that he thinks are difficult. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so our final answer is going to be what Stephen just said. What? Oh. Uh, 
That's I, I didn't even say an actual thing. Is it? <laughs> it's I like don't a know. conditional. It's a, Steve. Uh, do you want to? Is the, do you want to guess? Is I it? don't know what. Okay. It is. Okay. So Steven's answer. Steve got very angry there. Steven's answer is going to be our final one. How uh, do you spell the Konami? Is it actually spelled like yep, the name? It's Konami? spelled just like Konami. K O N A M I. Maybe it's something off of Nami. Shadow Moses. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. It's like it yeah. sounds like it. Yeah. It's a Nami nickname. That's what that's what I think too. All right, I'm yeah, we're going with that. I don't know the name of that. I know what you're talking about, but um, all right, number three. This one I think is a bit easier. Uh, how many duels did Dory and Brogy fight where the end was a tie? So uh, that disqualifies that one where it wasn't. <laughs> we should know this. Yeah, we should know this. This one, this one's a little more. Was it? <sighs> I didn't Somewhere. know there was another. I thought they just kept it. Right, with how this is going, I have to. Edit I, no, what he means is how many were a draw, and this means that when they fought and when Mr. Three interfered and uh, count, yeah. Dory lost, um, I want to say somewhere in the nine. No. If there was a hundred something. <sighs> it might be on, in the hundreds. There was like 150? Drag. Drag. I feel like it was. I just. I haven't read or watched this in a very long time. Just give us the money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're uh, pissing Steve off here. <laughs> I'd say. Uh, I want to play this game every week if there's real stakes to it like this. It does make it a lot more interesting. It's a game show. <laughs> yeah, we become a, we become a real game. Wants show. to be a dozen air. <laughs> oh man, that's uh, we, we we need an answer. Fucking someone else answer. Why do you think I'm the most Steven, qualified? I might say 150, um, but if no one else has a number, I would say like 500 or something like that. I don't think it was oh, that no, many. I think it was high. in the hundreds. Didn't they do it like every day? They were doing it for 100 years. That's what I remember. Uh-huh. So yeah. every day for 100 years. Oh, so did they? No, no, they didn't. Oh, were they there 100 years, or were they just 100 years? You know, you're right. Maybe it's a thousand something even. Yeah. Uh, no idea. No, it right. wasn't. I'm long. disqualified because I had to, I had to look it up because oh. I was too curious. I'm going. I will go with 150. I don't know because sure. unless anyone. No, I'd say 149. So 149. Was, was that the last one? 149. 149. Locking that in. There's two more. Um, sorry. Well, it's money. <laughs> what, are you, what are you old jeezing about? Um, <laughs> we're not gonna get the fact that we're not going to get any of that money. <laughs> uh, this one I'm going to forward to Steve to answer first. Who did Sanji make stir fried bean sprouts for? Oh, that's easy. Uh, Yosuku. Okay. Yep. Locking that in. Uh, we got 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, number five. What was the bounty of Higuma the bear? Four million berries, I believe. Does anyone I'm, I'm going to say four million. All right. Four million locking in. Anyone? Any objections? Okay, no. We're locking that in. Four million. Those are all the questions. Uh, big thanks for Ben Wild. That was, that was interesting. He said, we'll let you know uh, your winnings next week. Thanks for uh, the great work. Looking forward to OPP Dallas. Uh, next one comes from Connor. Last email. Uh, Steven said on his first appearance on the One Piece podcast back in the Steven cast uh, that one of his issues with One Piece are the long, drawn-out middle sections of arcs. I just mm. wanted to hear your general thoughts on the issue as I believe it has gotten worse since the time skip. For example, Dress Rose's Act 1 and 3 have blown me away with Sabo and the excellent fights, but the middle part with Luffy running and Law and Cuffs dragged on, especially reading weekly. Um, yeah, I don't... I, I would not say that the arcs before Dress Rosa were necessarily that bad or, or or not that far out of uh you know the average for Oda. Um, but this is definitely an example of, you know, where that hurts because it's been such a long arc and in particular the stuff about the the middle parts of the arcs are like it, it's the uh, the number of things like you know the the amount of time that is sort of spent in this kind of morass of storytelling where it's like okay we got to maneuver this character here and this character there and do this and that and that you know it's tied directly to the number of variables in play and obviously dress rosa has more of them than any other arc um, cause there's so many characters, there's so many different storylines going on. Um, and there's too many of them for him to like 
simultaneously push a lot of them forward. And so that's why you had things like, you know, certain fights that lasted an entire year because he initiated them and then had to clear up other storylines yeah. before he could he could do, you know, Zora versus Pika, stuff like that. Um, I think in all honesty, if Oda just took took that like month long break he took before the time skip and just charted this all out and took the time, even even a, a Kubo did it, which makes no sense since what is he? <laughs> What is he even doing? But uh, it, it may, you know, to just arc out where he's going to go with everything, I think it would really help the pace. Uh, the thing is, I don't think his editors care because each chapter does so freaking well. And the more volumes, the better, if anything. So they're not going to stop him. Um, yeah. And, you know, he's been doing it for 17 years and he's the best selling manga he knows you know, what it's, he's it's like doing. steve it's like stephen king it's like we you're gonna like chop his book in half yeah no you're no, gonna no, no, no. you take what he gives you um okay so ed i think it's everyone's favorite time it's time to peace the tweet yeah it's time to take your twitter questions comments and theories ed what do we have first uh from rosie ingers who asks uh, instead of law's arm being replaced skywalker style what if he gets a zoidberg operation i was hoping she... you'd do the voice what about the Zoidberg up. operation? <laughs> so this what about a Dr. Good, Nick? Uh, this embalmment, good in your species or bad? Uh, he, she, she includes a, an image of the Zoidberg when she cut, he, you know, when he ripped the arm off. Uh, and, he, the and he attaches it into the armpit. And he attaches it into the armpit. <laughs> the other armpit. Yeah. yeah, I love that episode. I, I would love to see Law get his arm back, but it's just on backwards. He's and, like a gimpy Goro. <laughs> what? <laughs> From Mortal Kombat. Oh. Sorry, that's beyond me. Um, Steve, what were you going to say? Uh, Dr. Nick, you said? Yeah. Okay, I guess that's it. Uh, oh, th- it's a moment. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're so angry today. Superboy Steve. Drew asks, what's everyone's top five or just number one moment in the manga that wasn't in the anime? Like Whitebeard getting his face, half his face, face melted. Oh, my God. First answer I don't know. I, don't, I, I need like a list of these. I don't, I don't know these off the top of my head. That's a good one, though. Yeah, I haven't, read, I haven't read enough of the manga. To know. Oh, the the way the beginning is structured. I, I know that's a weird no. answer, yeah. but that is the thing I think that kills kills it for me the most. Oh, what am I talking about? The easy number one answer: the Davy backfight arc. They the anime just kind of ruins it. The flow. see me like meeting Aokiji on Long Ring Longland. The whole in I, the anime, it just mm-hmm. makes so much more sense. The way he asked sense. the question was like, "What was in the an- oh, oh no, no no? I mean specifically the spark the part with uh, what's his face." All the filler uh, Tone rounds. Tone, Tone Jit. Yeah, yeah. So you've, Tone yeah. Jit's just like grandson, just like, I have a big mole. Hey, grandfather. Exactly. It was kind of like, oh, wow, that's kind of silly. It works a lot better. Yeah, than the I manga. really enjoy the Davy Back fight, but like in the anime, the canon episodes are really good. Oh, no, no. It's it's still great. It's done great. I think like, it's entertaining, at least. Like, hey, if you're going to like kind of like change things around and have more fun with it in the Davy Back fight. It's the, the filler after where it's not or it kind of. Yeah, uh, Toya thought like, hey, let's milk Foxy. And like, okay, maybe the first filler was okay. And I just watched Spa Island and I just thought, why is he here? What is, why? Makes no sense. Leave. <laughs> Go. I can't it used believe... to be funny. <laughs> okay, next question, Ed. Um, Mushin R- uh, Runja asks... Uh, old, but do you think the reactions of Kindemon and Kondro to Zoro versus Pika means that he is a beast even by Wano standards? Also, here's to hoping that Zoro's first serious fight is a female swordsman from Wano. Based on what I know about Wano, that is not going to happen. I hope that happens. That doesn't. I don't think that's true. I, they, they're just perverts, or Kondro, Kondro, not Kondro, uh, Kindemon is. But just because if they're modestly dressed. If it's anything like real feudal Japan, there will be no women swordsmen. But I don't. But like uh, uh, samurai swordsmen, not like I'm ninja a, are. Gen, I mean, people they portray ninja as being women, but less so the samurai. Anyway, I'll call it right now. There's, there'll be some swords swordsman character where like the the front gets ripped off and it's a girl. Hmm. That's, that's yeah. what I bet. Yeah, I would. I would. I would second that. Uh, um, our our news chief William asks. Uh, so how are you guys going to be selling Earth Day? Celebrating. I thought you said selling, but yeah, celebrating. No, celebrating. Yeah. Um, Steve, how are you going to be celebrating birthday? Um, going to Jack in the Box. 
<laughs> that would be swell. Um, if only there was a Jack in the Box on this side of the country. There, I have never seen a single freaking Jack in the Box on the East Coast. I'm okay without going to Jack in the Box. I'm going to be honest. Where else am I going to get tacos with American cheese slices in them? Ew. <laughs> Ugh. Ew. Is that a thing? Mm. Yes. I'll take the crab juice. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, next one from Pirates. Um, uh, do you guys have any any answers? To that? No, thank you, William, for that question. Yeah. <laughs> Pirates Unluck asks: In a hellish alternate universe where four kids still does One Piece, how do you think they would have handled the more gruesome aspects of recent arcs? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I recognize some of those words, but no. I'm she's saying sure in a hellish alternate universe, is, where four... I don't recognize that. No, word. I don't either. I actually yeah. want to know what happened. Like, remember that scene in Scanners when that guy's head explodes? <laughs> <laughs> That's what would happen. Put a gif of that in the episode. What? It dies. A gif. <laughs> a gif. Uh, We're not pronouncing moms. it like they want to. Choose gif. Ace Ace went back to his home planet. <laughs> Uh, Illusion Devilford asks, do you think you'll ever see a ship battle? I hope so. Yeah, that's a good point. Wait, we don't see that that that's much. Something we really Wait, if you put I'm it sorry. in the SDS, it can be a shit battle. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. Um, I have to go back. So do you think that would, like, Akainu just send Ace back into the dungeon then? <laughs> like, we just yeah. brought you out of the dungeon. Now you go back in. <laughs> oh, if he's back, no, he's going to the dungeon. I thought you were trying to execute him. Don't say that. <laughs> this dungeon leads to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> I his name would probably be changed to Red Mutt. He's going to the next dimension. Red um, Mutt, <laughs> Bluebird, and Yellow Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one stays the same. Uh, last, last one, Ed. How about, do you guys ever think we'll see a ship battle? Yeah, I really hope so. Um, so. We sort of got one in Film Z. Sort of. That's uh, true. We kind of with- did. With the uh, when Zed's uh, crew shows up, they kind of blow the crap out of the Mary, and you know the Mary's Sunny. Well, some well. Or, sorry, the Sunny. You're right. Uh, yeah. Is almost defenseless, but I would like to see its defenses, like you know, like a real ship battle, kind of like in Pirates. Yeah. That would be fun. Uh, last question, Ed. Danny Newman asks, "Do you think the Tuntada's power and speed are the inspiration for Gear Four, like CP9 was for Gear Two? No. Why not? No. I, I don't. I, Did Luffy I, I even see so. them? I'm just repeating Luffy's what Zach said. Any Tontadas? Stephen, what were you saying? No, Did I Luffy think he's even he's sees them. Uh, no, no, Stephen, the 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 one who does the translating. No, I don't care. Uh, I think he's seen uh, Wika before. Um, Wika. See Wika. Wika. Oh, yeah, but he of all the characters, he knows the least about the Tontadas, right? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I think that's. I don't. I don't think he knows enough about them to do it with um, Zoro. Because then when Wika saw uh, Violet, she was like, "Oh, it's like, oh, Lady Viola." And it's like, "Oh, how did you?" It's like, "Oh, I've, I know all about your uh, the Tontada's plight." It's like, "How?" It's like, "Bitch, you forgot my powers." You know, it's like that whole thing. <laughs> that was <laughs> on an episode. I remember. I think we're gonna round off from there. Thank you guys for piecing all that together. All right. <laughs> This has been the One Piece Podcast, episode 365 for 420. Uh, thank you guys for coming on this week. Um, let, let's just go through a couple things. Uh, first off, uh, we have Patreon, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, this, this is probably the mo- least intrusive way that you could really make a big difference in helping fund future, present, uh, and uh, long-running projects that we may have, including OPP Dallas, uh, anything else in the future we may want to film, or conventions, if you want to see us at conventions, this is a great way to fund us to go to more conventions in more distant lands, um, except for Steve, who goes to them anyway. Uh, you, can check, uh, you can check that out at patreon.com slash onepiecepodcast. Uh, I think we'll also be releasing the Banatomy shirts. Check that out at teespring.com slash banatomy shirts. Uh, banana me shirt. Uh, that, that one's not plural. Um, uh, also, check out OPP Japan at oppjapan.com if you haven't yet. Um, thank you guys all for coming on. I think that's uh, 
think that's the gist. Uh, OPP Dallas is coming soon. Please let us know who you want us to talk to, what you want to see. We already have a ton planned. You guys are going to freaking love it. It's going to give insights, even if you're not a fan of dubs, it's going to give you insights uh, into not just the dubbing process, but a lot of uh, other processes that go on at Funimation uh, and what they do with One Piece uh, from pretty much all... Uh, from beginning to end uh, in all their different distribution methods, so it's going to be really cool. Um, plus, uh, even if you don't like the dubs themselves, the voice actors and the directors and the people who work there are really cool and really hilarious, so uh, I think you'll enjoy uh, any interviews we'll be doing with them. So We should also be clear, it's not a movie. Yeah, no, uh, this will either be a short... It's a planet. <laughs> Because <laughs> I think we made it sound like a movie. It's it's not a movie. It's going to be more of a web series uh, as opposed to what OPP Japan was. At, at the very most, it'll be like a half hour little thing, but it, it won't be an hour and a half or two hours. I think that ended up being. Uh, no, an hour and a half. Uh, it won't or it won't be like that. It'll uh, be a fully operational battle station. <laughs> <laughs> we should double our efforts. Um, dude, uh, will be joining us in two weeks. We'll be going through the endings, uh, ra since, uh, you guys really enjoyed the opening rankings. I've already seen some of your guys' thoughts on endings. Uh, it's definitely a much more difficult list to go through. I'm going to have to spend some time on that, I know. Um, that's going to be in two weeks. Jose, you're free to come up for that. You've seen, I think, all of the endings at this yeah, point. Yeah, literally, I've seen them all. <laughs> so if, if you'd like to, if you'd like to come up for that, you're, you're welcome. Uh, but please, uh, either way, uh, we're, you know, let it, let us know uh, what you think. We're going to put a poll up next week for that. Uh, and that's going to be on May 4th. Uh, more Star Wars references, if you'd like. Uh, next week, though, we are going through Chapter 764. I am so psyched for this one. 784. 784. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> there's a four in it, and I'm sure there's a reason for that. Mm. Um, yeah, I just noticed that myself. Wow, you just blew my mind. I, that's what I'm here for, Stephen. Whoa. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so enjoy that. And unfortunately there is another week off after next week and that's when we're, we'll be doing the endings. Um, so I think without further ado, let's go around, see what everyone's up to. Jose, where could people find you? Uh, you can follow me at Jose underscore CNN. Uh, please speaking because it is 420. Speaking of, uh, we just launched a show called high profits on CNN. You can watch it now at CNN go, uh, okay. And it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it's actually a fun little show. And That's Sanjay the... Gupta, right? No, 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 no. That's oh, Weed no. 3. That was also yesterday. But High Profits is a brand new original series. Uh, oh. So please check that out. It's about uh, weed and uh, it's, Money. Uh, its effects in, uh, in a, its its effectiveness in, in legal uh, system with Colorado and, and how businesses are doing with it now that it's legal. Um and also, I have my own projects coming up. One, I have a panel uh, in at Momocon, and you definitely want to go to Momocon. Besides my panel, which is about Toonami music, there might be something else there that you guys can check out. Uh, besides the Toonami panel, there's something else there that I'm thinking of. And um, I have a podcast that's going to be coming out either this week or next week, so be on the lookout for that. Wait, where is this podcast? Which podcast? I can't say yet. It's not ready. <laughs> Uh, soon. I'll, I'll plug it next week. Okay, because I, I don't know how to check something out, or I don't know what or where Follow my Twitter account, at Jose underscore CNN. I'll Good. talk about it. There you go. That's all I needed. Um, Steven, where can people find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Translatosaurus. Um, yeah, that's about it. Cool. Not much on. Yep. It's succinct. Um, thank you again, Steven, for going mm -hmm. through the volume. Of course. Um, Steve, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Steve Yurko. You can find me on Tumblr, steveyurko.tumblr.com. Uh, DeviantArt, the stevyurko.deviantart.com. Yeah. What's the next con you're going to, Steve? It's going to be Anime Central in Rosemont, Illinois. Hey, and I'm going to be there for one day only walking to hey. the con. That means you'll just be sitting at my table. Yeah, so. Uh... <laughs> No, no, I may actually walk around the con a little bit. I'll probably mostly be at Steve's table. So uh, if you got, if you want to see me and Steve, we'll be there. It was a surprise. I didn't think I would be there, but I, I am going to be there. Um, so that's uh, May 16th through 19th, I think. Something like that. Uh, it's the it's the week before OPP Dallas. Um, so it's like this, I think, second or third week in, uh, in May. Um, 
I think that's everything. Ed, how could the good people out there contact us? Well, Zach, they can contact us at OnePiecePodcast.com, Twitter.com, YouTube.com, and Facebook.com slash One Piece Podcast. One Piece Podcast is our Skype name. One Piece Podcast at gmail.com is our email address. One Piece Podcast.tumblr.com for news updates and funny pictures. You can subscribe on SoundCloud. You can subscribe on the Stitcher Smart Radio app. You can subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Please do all three of those things. Or call us on our phone number, Zach. That phone number is 347-497-MAJI. That number again is 347-497-6254. Call anytime. Call anytime. anytime. With your questions, comments, or theories about Michael or Hoikel. Um, Thank you all for coming on this week. I just want to mention, uh, friend of the show, uh, Cody, has been doing a lot of work putting all of our episodes on YouTube. Uh, So you can check out episodes a week after they air on YouTube.com slash One Piece Podcast. Please, even if you've listened to it, have it running in the background or something to show uh, your support. Or, even better, there's a lot of people who don't understand how podcasts work or listening to podcasts or don't really get that whole thing. And they're very into YouTube. And this offers a really cool and different avenue for them. Uh, Or, I mean, this offers a very normal uh, avenue for them, I should say. Uh, So go to YouTube.com slash One Piece Podcast. Check that out. Again, next week. The manga's back. I am excited. I'm also ready. Not very ready, but I'm definitely excited. Uh, So, for the One Piece Podcast, my name is Zach. My name is Ed. And my name is Steve. We'll see you next week, everyone. Goodbye. Bye bye. Broken penis bone. This is a test recording of the One Piece podcast. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. Happy 420, Zach. Uh, Happy 420. Uh, Do you know whose birthday it is today, by the way, Ed? Hitler's. Let's just go in a better (laughs) direction. It is, but... No, at, uh, whose birthday is it? It's Bluno from the Bar's uh, birthday. Yes, I saw your tweet about that. Although, to be, <laughs> although in the spirit of 420, I saw pictures of people like handing out joints downtown on the mall because they think it's legal in D.C. But that's federal land. That's still illegal. <laughs> Were they getting arrested? <laughs> no, I didn't see pictures of them getting arrested. But uh, <laughs> like, maybe I should go. To, maybe, maybe I should go down there. These people might need lawyers. <laughs> uh, uh, people. But to the birthday thing, Ed, uh, people were suggesting that it should have been Smoker's birthday today, I saw, which I think uh, that's a lot better. Or who would you? Me, it's not a thing outside of America, though. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a police code, right? There also, are many differing origins of that term. We need to Steven to test levels. Also, he, he's, he's got stogies. Those aren't. That's yeah, true. That's yeah. No, that's, that's different. Uh, how are you doing, Steven? Uh, I'm doing good. I also noticed that uh, apparently today some uh, things, something making the rounds was a bunch of like uh, bad stock photography of people enjoying marijuana. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's it's pretty much as amazing as you, you would think. I don't know. Oh, I saw on AV but... Club, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's making the rounds. They're yeah. pretty funny.